Hey guys, welcome to night four of TNVC and Night Goggles Inc.'s V-Shot virtual shooting, hunting, outdoors, and tactical tele-event. Um, we've got a lot of great content for you again, once again, a lot of great giveaways for you coming out. The nights or, or uh, the week is going on, so the packages are getting bigger, so we've got a lot, a lot of great stuff for you. If you, want to, uh, if you want to be entered for the giveaways and you haven't already, as well as for promotional, special promotional discounts um, and coupon codes uh, to some of the new products that, that, we've, uh, that we've released um, this week, make sure that you go online to tnvc.com slash vshot. That's V-S-H-O-T-T. Two T's in V-Shot, uh, and, and sign up with your email to register, uh, and you'll be automatically entered for all of the giveaways, including our grand prize giveaway of a TNV PBS 14 uh, tomorrow. So tonight we've got um, some featurettes on IR lasers, uh, clip-on night vision devices, night vision pistols, and night vision driving, and, and, and the Light Force IR lights, which are also some of our giveaways tonight. Uh, we've got a lot of, um, you know, and with, with all, we're going to be talking all about the different applications of night, of night vision, the different kind of accessories that you can use to maximize your capabilities. The live stream tonight, uh, all of us will be going through um, our individual carbine setups uh, and kind of talking about the different ways that we've got everything configured for, for our particular jobs and for, for what it is that we do with those rifles. We'll be showing you a couple of, so we'll be showing you a couple of different ways uh, that you could potentially set up your rifle, not saying that, that you have to set your carbine up the way any of us sets ours up, but it might give you some ideas and might give you some tips to go along with the featured content tonight. Along with that, uh, we're also happy to announce another new product uh, today that we have available, which is the L3 Harris CNVD LR. Uh, that's the M2124 long range. Um, it is a, it's, the, the, it's the long range clip on site based on the PVS24, and it's going to be uh, it, and it's going to be in the 2376 plus minimum FOM unfilmed white phosphor, which is not really been widely commercially available in the past uh again it's it's you know one of those things that have been out there uh but but aren't all that common we're happy to they should be live on the website now so we're happy to uh, have those finally be available awesome all right let's roll into tonight's videos Augie from TNVC. Sam from TNVC. Today we're going to talk about lasers and a couple of things about lasers. Um, IR aiming lasers are basically your ability to identify targets and then target them simultaneously. So uh, an IR laser basically it's kind of like a flashlight and the reticle of your optic but obviously superimposed at the target um, and it, it, that is generally accepted as the most, you know, the preferred way of targeting uh, identification and engagement. Um, and it wasn't until very recently that passive aiming can, kind of came into the mix. Um, and it's, it's gaining traction, but I would still say that, you know, IR lasers are still the preferred, um, you know, identification and targeting method uh, for shooting at night. 
And so um, we have a multitude of lasers and um, a multitude of generations. I'm gonna let Augie kind of get into them. So before we talk about um, the different kind, the different individual variety of lasers, there's basically two major way that the major ways that IR lasers are available. So for a lot of people watching, the the primary the the primary thing that that you'll be uh, able to purchase as an individual uh, commercial customer or as an individual um, even military or law enforcement customer is going to be a, a class one laser. So lasers are actually, they're not regulated by the ATF, they're not regulated by uh, the DOJ at all, they're actually regulated by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, because lasers are classified based on their, their output power level. And with IR lasers, because the near IR laser isn't visible to the naked eye and therefore won't trigger a blink reflex, IR lasers um, in the near IR range are, are actually technically classified as, as medical devices. So in order for an IR laser to be civilian legal, um, it needs to be under 0.7 milliwatts of output power. So that's what's referred to as class one. For military and law enforcement, for government organizational customers that are, that, that are purchasing organizationally, uh, the most commonly available, the most commonly available IR aiming lasers and illuminators are are what are referred to as Class 3B. So Class 3B, you know, is a, is a significantly more powerful laser. You're talking about anywhere from 25 to 100 to 200 milliwatts of output power. So you, you, to a certain extent, you know, you are talking about being able to to perform um, instant instant eye, laser eye surgery. Uh, which is why you know they're they're heavily regulated and they're heavily restricted. Um, so, kind of little known fact, TNBC was actually the first company to approach what was at the time laser devices, um, now Steiner E Optics, uh, to introduce Class One IR aiming lasers. So a lot of the manufacturers were were a little skeptical that there was even a commercial market for class one aiming laser, for, for IR aiming lasers. Uh, and so they were pretty much all manufacturing class 3B IR lasers for military and law enforcement use, and those were not available to the commercial market. Uh, TNVC kind of, we, we put our money where our mouth is, and, and we got the first class one IR lasers introduced to the commercial market. So really when you're talking about Class one civilian legal lasers. Uh, you're you're talking. You know, TNBC had a historically has had a very big part in making those available. With the Steiner D ball I squared, that was the that was the first one really, um, and then the Appeal C kind of followed on after that um, because TNBC put up. You know, they didn't shut up; they put up anyway. <laughs> And now, a word from our sponsors. Uh, we got a mission that we've been uh, tasked with from SOCOM. We have a Global Hawk that's on station. He's been following an HBT we've been looking at for the past couple months. He's taking a meeting in a local town. This HBT is the guy that's responsible for a lot of the roadside IED bombings that we've been having in the past. He's at the main entryway into the compound. All right, be ready to go on the pad in 30 mics.
Myers Mall C1 Plus is a commercially available multifunction laser aiming device that offers superior illumination quality, improved ergonomic interface, and greater output power than any other commercially available laser device. The core operating principle of the Mall is the quick change setting selection switch that allows the end user to change their output power and divergence with a single motion. This allows the end user to select what they need when they need it. Hey everybody, I'm Don Edwards from Greenline Tactical. And I'm Sam Houston from TMVC, also Greenline Tactical. Um, Don, why don't you tell us a story from the olden days? Okay, let me tell you a story. So, long, long time ago when we couldn't see in the dark as well as we can now. Is that, is that kind of what you want to hear? Okay. So, um, today we're going to talk about clip-on night vision devices as you see right here in front of us. Right? And that, that's what this little video is going to be about. But first, uh, it's interesting to note some of the history and how we got to these. Uh, back in the day, we had night vision scopes. Some of you guys might even remember uh, the PVS-4 or when we had the PVS-17, which was, was really awesome for, for its time. And I, I wouldn't mind having one now. But they were dedicated night scopes. At, at some point, um, at the early, early 2000s, late 90s, uh, the government, the military said, hey, we don't like the idea that our soldiers have to take their optic off of their rifle, put something else on at nighttime, and then take it off. Yeah, you guys say that these mounts are returned to zero, but they didn't really trust them. And it was just more stuff for a guy to keep track of and worry about in a combat environment. So they said, we want something that will allow, especially our snipers with magnified optics, to leave it on the gun, keep it zeroed, keep it torqued down the way they want it, and be able to transition from day to night. So this was the solution, these clip-on night vision devices, such as this uh, PVS 24 LR, CMV DLR that I have here uh, from L3 um, came about, right? This one over here was one of the first ones that I've ever was, was issued, PVS 22. And it's still, in my opinion, a workhorse. Um, so things about this, it had to be repeatable. A, a soldier's got to be able to take this off and put it on as needed and not lose his zero. So it had to be guaranteed less than one minute of angle point of impact shift and that had to be repeatable. So if, it, if it's off a little bit, it has to be off that exact same little bit every single time so that he can compensate for that with his dial scope it. and dial that in or hold whatever's needed. Sometimes you have no point of impact shift. It's great. One of the reasons these things cost so much money is because of that. That and that they're shock isolated to withstand the recoil of being on rifles up to 308 and some, in some cases like this one, 50 BMG. Um, so having these lenses perfectly collimated, doing things like having a catadioptic lens with, with reflectivity inside that, that brings much more light into it so that you have more light transmission into the, uh, the micro channel plate um, to give you a better image. So those are kind of what, uh, you know, that, that's how we got to this. It uh, was a need that was fulfilled by the manufacturers for, for snipers to be able to engage with these guns out at further distances. And let's say you are, you know, uh, you know, heavily into PRS or, or long range hunting or you're a law enforcement uh, or military sniper guy and you're looking to either initially outfit your um, weapon with a clip-on or you're looking at upgrading your weapon that maybe you already have an existing clip-on. 
kind of the, the mantra that, that Don and I prescribe to is uh, buying the right clip-on for your setup generally means tailoring it to your optic and not necessarily being uh, limited by the clip-on. Uh, meaning, if you're running a 20 power scope, you probably don't want to buy a short-range clip-on that is uh, magnification um, restricted, like this PVS 24LR. Its sweet 24. spot is, uh, sorry, the 24. Uh, its sweet spot's about four to six X. Uh, and, and, and past that, you're, you're really topping out its capability. You start to lose resolution. Well, that was designed to go in front of an right. Acon. Right. So you don't buy this unless you have that type of optic. Um, if you're running more of a DMR setup and you're running, say, a, you know, a one to eight, one to 10, two to 12, the, the 22 is a very uh, viable option. And then you start getting into your four to 16s or three to 15s or even higher then you need to start talking about, you know, the the big boys on the block as far as CNVDs, meaning the 24LR. You can you can zoom up to about oh 12 to 14x, uh, the 27, depending on the glass you're running and the environmental conditions, uh, 14 to 18x, uh, the Knights Armament PVS 30, uh, also about the same. About the same. Yeah. Um, and, and really tailor it to your magnification, not necessarily your recoil rating, though you, you do need to take that into account. But um, as technology changes um, in scopes, you don't want to be left in the dirt, um, in the dust, because of your clip-on. Um, you can always keep the same clip-on and, and upgrade your scope and not be um, magnification limited. Right. But And another thing, too, the performance you're going to get out of this has a lot to do with what kind of scope you're putting it in front of as well. Right. So, um, not naming any brands, but if you have mediocre quality glass, you're starting out with that mediocre quality of, of vision. This thing is going to give you what it's going to give you, but when you're looking at it through something that's not the greatest quality glass, you're, you're not going to see as well. Just like during the daytime, you know, you're going to get the same degradation of performance so if you're looking to see and shoot as far as possible just like during the daytime you want a good piece of glass so if you have something that's that's budget quality expect budget quality results even in the dark it's not going to magically get better because you have this in front of it um, but it is going to it is still going to work um, so right here this is I just picked this up this is the, uh, the PVS 27 like I said it, it has to be repeatable um, when, or it's, excuse me, like I said, it's guaranteed less than one minute of angle, that's one inch at 100 yards, um, repeatability in, uh, and zero shift, as long as you do certain things, like put it on the same gun. It doesn't mean I can take it off of my gun, put it on his gun, and it's going to be the same, right? It also has to be in front of the same scope, so if I switch things out, things could change. And then also, it has to be in the same place. So one of the things that we always do is put a witness mark to make sure that we're always putting this thing back in the same spot every time. Because if you don't, you're not guaranteed that, that uh, less than one minute of angle or the same result that you had last time, right? Yep. Um, and as we were saying, these are, these are highly calibrated, collimated systems. Uh, and what that basically ensures is that that center point uh, of your scope glass is the center point of the clip-on, so you're, you're getting very little variance as far as you know, parallax and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that you know, you know, you can make those longer-range shots with confidence um, when you're, you know, out there in the field doing it. Right. But hey, some other things that affect the performance, right? I talked about the quality of the glass and, and obviously the quality of the tube and stuff like that. But lighting conditions, and he mentioned it earlier, lighting conditions not just here where we are but downrange where your target is, okay? So if it's really, really dark, just like with your night vision goggles, you're gonna have a little bit more of a, a struggle to, to see what you need to see. You can always introduce infrared light. You can use some sort of laser. You can use some sort of powerful illuminator to illuminate your target and put some, some light on it to help you out there. So there are things you can do to get more bang for the buck out of these things. Uh, we really like putting a laser on there and there's mm -hmm. there's now some lasers out there that are specifically designed for that purpose to be able to actually not use it as a as a designator to shoot 
but to put that energy, that IR energy on your target so you can identify it because you can't shoot what you can't see and identify. Yep. But uh, those are just some things to think yeah. about with uh, clip-ons and setting a gun up appropriately. Um, you know, it, don't cheap out on a clip-on. If you're if you're in that market, go ahead and buy a quality clip-on, uh, and then obviously tailor it to the glass you've got. So, just some things to think about. Uh, if you have questions, we're here for you. But again, I'm Sam at TMVC, and this is. Hey, I'm Don. Have a good. The OpsCore Fast SF Super High Cut Helmet is our most advanced ballistic helmet, which comes with a host of innovations featuring a modular, scalable, and lightweight design suitable for your toughest missions. The Super High Cut Ballistic Shell is made of a hybrid composite of the most advanced materials, providing both protection and comfort. This helmet is a high performance evolution of the OpsCore Fast MT Super High Cut Helmet with an 8% weight reduction while maintaining compatibility with legacy fast accessories. The super high cut shell geometry provides critical coverage without interference and optimizes weight distribution for increased stability and balance. OpsCore super high cut skeleton arcs offer a lower profile with weight reduction from the Fast MT super high cut arcs while adding more attachment points, including shims, for quick, easy, and secure accessory mounts. The Fast SF features the new lightweight OpsCore modular bungee shroud, or MBS, which reduces snag hazards and interference. The MBS has an integrated bungee with carabiner clips, providing a snag-free NVG retention and stabilization solution. The OpsCore Vented Lux Liner offers enhanced impact protection, and molded in-vent holes are integrated with the shell to provide increased airflow and reduce heat stress. The molded liner features a proprietary recessed channel, accommodating over-the-head communication headsets with no interference or discomfort and the ability to put on or remove the helmet without removing the headset. To learn more, visit OpsCore.com. Um, today we're going to talk about um, how to set up a pistol for night vision shooting and then some of the history and, and accoutrements involved. So, Don, why don't you take it away? Yeah, well, first of all, and we've been doing this for, for quite a while now, um, using your pistol while wearing night vision used to be kind of an afterthought or a just-in-case kind of thing because we didn't really have good aiming systems. If you had tritium sights, you could line those up and, and be somewhat passable. You could put a laser on there, but if you put an IR laser, which would work great, it's kind of a one-trick pony and a lot of money to spend on something that only does one thing for you. Uh, and a visible laser would basically take away your passive aiming. Nowadays, um, with the trend, and um, I say it's here to stay, of putting uh, red dot optics on our pistols, it really brings the, the, uh, um, the pistol into the night fight, if you will. Um, and one of the reasons I believe that it is here to stay is just about every major manufacturer that makes red dot optics makes one now that is specifically designed to go on a pistol, not as an afterthought. And almost every major firearms manufacturer that makes duty grade or duty um, pistols makes optics ready versions of those pistols. So we got that going for us and we just keep going forward. Every year they come out with something a little bit better that does what we wanted it to do. So yep. now that we have these on here, it really is, you know, as Sam would say, um, the future is now. Yeah, well, the future is now. But it brings it brings the pistol into into this game of, of night vision stuff where it didn't really used to have a front row seat. Yeah, now right. it's I would say it's almost equal with a rifle in terms of you know its viability under night vision. Yeah. Um, and they you know as Don mentioned in the past we used to use lasers, be they vis or IR. Um, another thing to think about or that was a kind of an issue with with utilizing lasers was holster support. Nowadays, uh, you know, the trend is obviously uh, weapon-mounted lights. Everybody makes a holster for this particular light. This is a Surefire X300 Ultra. This is a Surefire X300V Vampire Light. Um, the, the amount of holster support for a, a setup like this is, you know, almost limitless. So um, when you set up a gun, generally these are the bases that we're going to um, 
right. have to have to hit and cover to have something um, effective for for night vision, you know, pistol shooting. So uh, the first one, go ahead, Don. Well, stuff that we need on here. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, we we already talked about the red dot. You you want to have some sort of mini red dot optic, one that is reliable, that's going to work, that's designed to go on a pistol, right? And ideally, it should be night vision compatible. You can get away with some that aren't by turning them all the way down, but it's not going to give you what you really want out of it. You want one that is has night vision settings on it, right? Um, another thing is uh, and a light. We already talked about the lights. Um, we like the brightest white light I can get, but some people um, have a preference for having some sort of infrared so they can stay 100% passive, and I get it. So a, a vampire light or something like that makes sense for, for some people. But those are the main things. And uh, oh, and sights. Uh, I still like having iron sights on there. Yeah, I, I depend on, uh, I, aim points are reliable, but having some backup sights are good. And if it's, this is gonna be a night fighting pistol, we really don't recommend the tritium. It seemed like a great idea until you turn on your nods, right? And now you've got four orbs, four, of light. three to four different glowing things out in front of you as you try to put one of those on your target and pull the trigger. So stay away from that. We've learned that the hard way from watching other people struggle with what seemed like a great idea at the time. Yep. So. Um, those are just a couple of things to keep in mind, bear in mind when you're setting up a pistol if you want to, you know, milk as much capability out of this platform as, uh, as possible. You know, doing this stuff to the pistol, it's going to give it, you know, a whole lot of potential that you may or may not have even thought about. So, um, you know, if you haven't done it yet, it's 2021. We put optics on our handguns and we shoot them, you know, from muzzle out to 200 yards, day or night, rain or shine. Um, and, you know, get with the times, people. <laughs>
and you as the end user need to get good at being able to manually tweak the brightness on the red dot as um, you know your environment changes but um, once you've you know done that and gone out uh, the other thing is you know um, shit <laughs> where was I going with that Talk about adjusting adjusting the uh, brightness yeah adjusting the brightness but um, You were going to talk uh, about you were going to talk about people shoot better sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. Fuck. Should we just start over? No, just like no. start. Just go like you ready. Yeah. Yep. Let me know you're ready. Uh, another thing we've noticed uh, in night vision classes um, during the pistol portion is most people. This is a generalization, but most people tend to shoot better, more accurately under night vision, um, and we theorize that because they're. Peripheral vision goes from you know 180, 190 degrees down to this shrunken toilet paper tube of 40 degrees. So they're not being distracted by all this stuff going on out here. It's just like this is our problem. This is what we're going to deal with, and this is all I can do. Uh, and, and because of that, guys are less distracted, and therefore they, you, you know, they perform better, uh, generally speaking, uh, through that toilet paper tube at night. It's it's actually kind of amazing. So. Um, by by utilizing this gear and having this setup, I think it really brings the the capabilities of the pistol not necessarily up to where a rifle is, but the pistol is a, is now a viable offensive weapon system, um, not necessarily relegated to sitting in your holster for most applications. Like you can actually get out and do some work with this thing, whether you're a hunter, or you're law enforcement, military. Or a civilian shooter, um, you know, using this stuff for, you know, property checks on your ranch or, or, you know, bump in the night kind of stuff. Not that I advocate, you know, throwing on a bunch of night vision to go, you know, investigate a dish that fell off your, um, you know, rack in your kitchen. But you know, you could. Um, but you know, having this stuff, the, the pistols, a really effective piece of gear for a lot of different stuff. Hey everybody, I'm Don Edwards uh, from Greenline Tactical. I'm Thomas Carlson with Light Force. And uh, we want to talk a little bit about some of these Light Force lights that you can get from TNBC um, that are um, great for your off-road vehicle. Um, I have some of these on my 4Runner. These are the Strikers. I have 850 nanometer Strikers on the bumper. And then I have these Rock 40s um, floodlights on my bumper as well in uh, 940 nanometers. The reason I chose the two different setups is if I want to see really far and I want a lot of light if I'm driving night driving with MBGs, these are going to light up the night. They're going to light up the whole area in front of me. If I want a little bit lower profile, they, these things do look like dragon eyes yeah. when, we're, when you're yeah. driving around to the naked eye. So if I don't want people or something to see me, uh, these give me a little lower profile with the lower nanometers mm -hmm. and they also give me not as much light. So even this in an 850 is not gonna, gonna push as far out, but it's usually gonna be enough. Like uh, if I'm not driving very fast, down dirt roads in the back country, this yep. is probably all the light I need. Yep. But if I'm gonna pick up some speed or something like that, or it's big open terrain, maybe yeah. this is, the, these strikers are really gonna light up the night, won't they? Exactly, yeah. The Rock 40s were designed for kind of UTV, ATVs, um, mounting on ditch brackets on, on various vehicles. and. And they're effective, the, the spot versions out to, to about 300 yards or so. 
Um, the the striker infrared version right here, this guy, this was definitely built for like U.S. special operations, mm -hmm. hard hardcore use. Um, it's easily effective out to about 800 yards, no At problem. Least, yeah, it's, it's, it's bright. It, it's super bright. And, uh, and and definitely, if you're gonna be driving higher speeds at night, we definitely recommend a, at least a single striker, if not dual strikers on your vehicle. Um, and like Don said, I think you, you run these sort of like left and right a little bit to kind of give you some side light. And then, yeah. you, and then you have the striker to kind of throw distance down, down the trail for you. So. Yeah, I have them wired to two separate switches, but if I want both of them on, the, the smaller ones are canted out, so I get a little bit more to the side yep. to, to see. And it, and it lights up everything with both of those on. Yeah. Um, what's that right there? Yeah, we also have the, uh, it's a, it's, it's been around for a little while. It's our Enforcer um, IR LED handheld spotlight. And this is the newest variant of it. So it, it has a IR spotlight and a red LED all built into one unit. Um, you get about eight hours of runtime from the battery that's built into the handle. And it uh, it throws really far, mm -hmm. um, and it has a a Fresnel reflector here, so you can kind of tune the beam from kind of wide to to focused essentially. Um, and I would say it's it's effective out to a thousand yards, easy. Um, and then you can make it really wide and use it for more close up searching stuff. Um, really durable. It's all made out of ABS plastic. You can drop it. It bounces off anything. Um, they're built like tanks. Is it waterproof? Uh, rainproof, weatherproof. Rainproof, yep. Waterproof. No problem for, the, for elements like that. And then you also have a fuel gauge up front too. So you just push down on this little thing and you get a battery meter. Um, and yeah, it's a great kind of all around searchlight, especially under night vision. If you're say trying to remain low profile, you're looking at your vehicle, you're looking for something and you want to be a little bit more low, low profile, I mean, this is the, probably the best tool you can, you can have for it, so. And the cool thing about, like, and you could use something like this for search and rescue or something like that. Not that you're trying to stay hidden when you're doing that, but with night vision goggles and a powerful IR light like this, you could see so much more that you'd never see without it, or with just walking around with white lights yep. at nighttime. Yep. Right? So there's a, so many applications, so many good reasons to have a good high-powered handheld IR light not necessarily tactical. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so uh, TNVC is now uh, the exclusive distributor for Lightforce in the US for all of their infrared products. Um, and for those who don't know about Lightforce, they are owned by Nightforce Optics, the, you know, the SOCOM provider of the one to eight uh, NXS and, and all the other you know, popular uh, Nightforce Optics products. So, um, it's all under one company, and Lightforce is the uh, lighting division of, of the parent company. So, um, so high quality stuff. Um, most of it's made in Australia, and uh, it all has a lifetime guarantee, and uh, they're built to last, that's for sure. Definitely. You could beat somebody up with this. But yeah, <laughs> if you're interested in IR off road lights for your, uh, for your truck, Take a look at these. I've been running these for about a year and a half now, yeah. a year at least, and uh, have had no issues, zero issues. Yeah, I have like one real world story from the, the Strikers. We were coming back from Overland Expo, I think it was a year and a half ago, two years ago, and we went through probably the craziest sandstorm ever on Highway 10, and it was literally sandblasting the paint off of our cars, and you couldn't even see. And we got through this whole thing probably about two hours later, the strikers were totally fine, and the rest of the car's windshields were all kind of sandblasted. There was like paint missing on on the Forerunner, and so um, the coatings they use, the, the the special plastics that they use for this stuff is is really durable. So I mean, it's all mil spec stuff too, right? Yep, it meets, yep, exactly. It's all the testing requirements. Exactly. For all that. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, tnbc.com, uh, search Lightforce, and you could see all the uh, offerings for infrared driving and search and rescue. All right.
All right, guys, we're back. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, enjoyed all of that content. Um, once again, a reminder. Uh, if you guys want to be signed up for the giveaways, including the grand prize drawing of a PBS 14 uh, from TNVC tomorrow, make sure that you sign up at tnvc.com slash vshot with two T's. Uh, I want to th real quick, I want to thank some of our sponsors, uh, Safari Land, um, BE Myers, Light Force USA, Weapon Outfitters, Optics One, um, Liberty's Defense. Ops Core, uh, ACS Pouches, Emerson Knives. Are we forgetting anyone? TMVC. Well, it's, TMVC is presenting the whole oh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Blue Force Gear, I wasn't paying Blue yeah. Force Gear, yeah. and that's Blue right. Gear. Thank you. Blue Force yeah. Gear. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we talked a lot about different kinds of accessories, different kinds of tools that you can use to maximize your night vision capabilities. Uh, obviously, just having night vision goggles alone um, is a massive step up, uh, but by properly utilizing all the various tools and accessories that are available, um, you can really, you know, it, it is a true force multiplier, you know, especially in the last 20 years, that term force multiplier has been thrown around so much. Everything from fucking drinking water to, to panoramic NVGs is, 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 has been called a force multiplier. Uh, but, but true, real good integration of all of your accessories, uh, many of them available at tnvc.com or nightgoggles.com, uh, is really going to allow you, is, is really going to be a, a force multiplier. Um, so tonight during our panel discussion, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the different ways that, that we all have our, our primary carbines set up. Uh, we're going to show you a couple, uh, a couple other interesting uh, ways that you can that you can set your rifles up, um, and then a quick preview of a new product. So we'll start with uh, Chris Sizelove, who again is our special guest tonight, director of training for Blue Force Gear. What's up? The specialist of guests. Yeah. No <laughs> shit, right? Uh, last man standing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is my predominant rifle I use for teaching, so it mostly shoots a lot of UTM. Uh, just doing CQB in the house. Uh, I don't have a live fire facility, so it's all UTM. But uh, I've been running this this uh, Ingall L3 Ingall unit, uh, digging it over some of the old, older legacy products, just because it has a much smaller, thinner like form factor. It's 12 o'clock on the rail, has a uh, vis override function. So even when I'm running it in IR, there's uh, quite a few times where I'm like, hey, I can go from IR and just long press that nipple and bam got got my vis laser to apply for some niche situations uh, but it's been working real well i don't have a pressure pad or nothing on it i typically just run at 12 o'clock and, and use my long i was blessed with monkey hands and long thumbs so yeah. help it helps me out with the switchology a little bit um that's pretty much about it man in a cloud defensive rain light dig those guys it's a bulletproof light uh, i actually need to get a a key mod mount since I'm like the last nerd that's running a key mod rail on this old legacy BCM upper, you know. But it's a it's a it's a fucking workhorse, man. And of course the Vickers padded Vickers sling on there. Um what are manufactured you, by Blue Force. What are your questions? Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's like synonymous at this point. Well so I think we've talked about it during some of the yeah. some of the Q and A's. Uh you, you want to talk about your optics setup a little bit as well? Yeah again dude this is just an old uh, LaRue mount and a yeah. T1 that just won't die. I've told myself over the years, like when this thing shits the bed, uh, you know, I'm going to go to all the new stuff out there and it just won't die. So yeah. uh, I have some, I have a, a lot of the newer stuff on my on my other rifles, but like I said, predominantly this is a UTM gun I use for training and, and doing things like that. So it fits the build perfectly right here. And because I have a kind of a long neck and flexible and I don't have big shoulders, like I can get away without, without running the Unity mounts. Um, they are a little bit more efficient, but I don't really have a whole lot of problem finding a dot with uh, PVS 31s through this thing, especially mm -hmm. with the stock extended all the way out. Obviously, if, if you're running it in like this, it's an absolute no-go, so I just don't do that. Yep. Cool. Anything Sweet. else? No, not that'll be all. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not super, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I don't have a, it's not a 40 watt, you know, plasma gun or nothing like that. Well, Maybe next year. Should yeah. be. <laughs> Only what's on the from, shelf from, from, from Light Force yeah. for, for, for that. Yep. So what about you, Bill? Yeah, so I'm uh, <clears throat> running a BCM Kino with a older than key mod Picatinny rail. 
So, um, I'm left-handed, so may look backwards to some of you guys. Um, running a, uh, a Maul and then a um, Surefire Fury. In a, and believe it or not, what's old is new again is the um, the uh, uh, Vic, uh, the Vic, uh, Vic the VTAC. VTAC. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing's old school. I man. like how it gets it nice and tight up against the rail. And then I run a small Princeton Tech uh, task light underneath. Uh, it's red and IR, uh, used for like just immediate searches, thresholds, stuff like that. Uh, optic wise, I run a uh, a T1, an old T1, like like Chris. Uh, T1 and a Unity Tactical uh, fast mount, <clears throat> and then same thing, flip to center. Uh, probably one of the things I picked up recently was, um, yeah, your batteries can die in a uh, in a T1, um, so I use that little Knight's Armament um, battery storage cap. Uh, that's that's actually something I've uh, really dug. That's and then, uh, yeah, padded sling, and uh, this is what you'll see when I'm out uh, teaching for the class. Mm. That's a nice rifle. Yeah. Just tell us a little bit more about that laser that you got there. What, yeah. you, what you're running there. Yeah, yeah Mall DA. Um, yeah, great laser. Um, you know, more capable than, than I am <laughs> by any means. Yeah, it uh, is. And, and, yeah, he's seen me shoot. So. <laughs> but, no, it's, it's, it's a great laser. Um, you know, um, no complaints. I love the switchology. I think... I think if there's a huge strength on the the mall, it's the the ergonomics of it and, and how well it can work. And actually, with this setup, again, kind of with Chris, a little bit, I, I'm able to actually run it ambi without any uh, tape switches or anything else. I can still activate my light and my laser right or left-handed. Mm. I like it. Yeah. Quad rails, man. Yeah, yeah. People hate on them. They're cool. Yeah, it works pretty good. <laughs> I so mean, they cool. work. They're so yeah. heavy, but so cool. Yeah, just go to the gym, man. Yeah, <laughs> lift more heavy stuff. Yeah, right. yeah. This is uh, this is Jake the Snake, a <laughs> Sig Rattler, <laughs> uh, EOTech EXPS, a Surefire Vamp Light because obviously there's not really a whole lot of rail space there, uh, a Steiner TMEC Tour Mini. Uh, because you've got to have an, an infrared laser on your rifle to be able to shoot stuff. Um, Surefire Mini 762. This is a 300 BLK VTAC sling, and it is good to go. Jeez. Oh, uh, little shout out. Unity Hub, Unity Lightwing, Unity Fixed Front Sight. Unity, uh, Unity oh, okay. Vert Grip. Yeah. <laughs> Unity. All the shout better. outs. Yeah. <laughs> this one's for you, Chip. Unity. <laughs> it looks like it's begging for a couple coats of paint, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we can we can do that later. We'll throw it in the retention <laughs> pond out back. Yeah. <laughs> Give it the Krylon touch. So I've got a couple of rifles to show. Um, use a couple of different rifles for a couple of different things. Uh, I'm always evaluating uh, various different things. So this is uh, just an, an old HK416, talk about old guns, but it's kind of updated uh, with, with some new stuff. Uh, this we talked about a little bit the other night, but it is the uh, Pixels on Target Voodoo S. So it's a brand new thermal clip-on and monocular that we're evaluating. Uh, it's about 10 ounces, and as you can see, it's... It's not very large in the scheme of things. If you're used to seeing, or, or if you watched our video on, on clip-on night vision devices uh, and, and clip-on thermal devices, are usually pretty big. Um, a lot of folks may at least be familiar with the Skeet IR, or, or, or the Skeeter, as some folks call it. Uh, it was a BAE uh, unit um, designed back in like 2012, 2013. They are still you know, excellent units. Um, they're, they're, they're fantastic little thermals. But this Voodoo S is kind of like the the next generation of uh, of the Skeeter. It's it's not made by BAE. It's not made by uh, Trigicon now. That's that's making um, that that that's making the uh, the Skeeters. But it is, so it's made by a company called Pixels on Target. They're a fairly new company um, out there. But but this has been undergoing some pretty heavy testing by DoD, and then obviously we the TNBC staff are going to be testing it. Um, I've got it set up here with uh, an EOTech XPS-3 um, and a three, EOTech G33 uh, three-power magnifier. 
Um, I usually prefer to have my sights a little bit higher uh, on, on my primary rifles, but right now, because this thermal uh, is, is, is got an optimal center line at absolute co-witness height, and so that's one of the reasons that, that we've got it thrown on this HK416, because it's got a little bit of a taller top rail, uh, so I still get a little bit of height, still not as much height as, as I maybe want, uh, but it allows me to keep that good optical center line. But you can put just about any other optic behind this if you wanted to put it on a riser. Um, obviously, it's compatible with the, uh, the Wilcox uh, Skeeter mount, uh, the flip to the side mount. So you can flip out uh, the clip on as well as the magnifier uh, on, on a Wilcox flip to the side mount as well. Um, 640 by 480 uh it's again we you know this is a fairly new product one that we have just kind of started evaluating uh but it's extremely promising i think you know i think you all got a chance to, yeah, to take a gander slick. through it um 12 micron system uh so so it's got you know an excellent image very intuitive controls as well um it's got an onboard uh, 0.7 milliwatt class one laser these are going to be commercially available. We don't have um, an exact price in ETA just quite yet uh, on when these are going to be available. Uh, but when they are, uh, they will be available to the commercial market. And then, of course, I'd be remiss if not to mention uh, the, the Liberty's Defense Suppressor Cover that I've got mounted here. Um, especially when you're talking about using something like a thermal clip-on on, on a short carbine like this. Um, you know, which is, you know, because again, this isn't a long range gun. Obviously you can tell it's a 10.4 inch barrel. Um, it's, it's not a long range gun and the Voodoo S, you know, the S is for short range. There's also a Voodoo M, which is a little, a little bit of a longer range optic. Uh, but this is really what would be called, you know, an, an assaulter's thermal. Um, and, and it's more or less an assaulter's gun. So this suppressor cover allows, you know, it, it kind of keeps the heat contained so it's not interfering with that thermal image. And also, it's not something that gets talked about a whole lot, uh, but especially if you're using a suppressor, um, the heat coming off the suppressor can actually also fuck with your, your IR aiming laser a little bit as well. You, you get a little bit of wavering um, as it goes through the heat. So that's this HK416 here. Yeah, you better get, be getting not clone yeah. correct. You're gonna though. be toting that thing around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not clone correct. <laughs> so, going to the total other end of the spectrum, or maybe not the total other end of the spectrum, but um, you know, Chris, Bill, a lot of folks. You, you know, there, there's a lot of folks with a lot of experience. Um, you know, everybody. I, I won't say everybody, but a lot of folks that, that buy this gear, that are interested in this gear, you know, they, they are, are interested in, in, in the soft community, what is soft doing, you, you know, the, the, the O word, the operator word. Uh, but we also acknowledge that uh, not everybody is an operator, you know, by nature, uh, special operations is special. Not everyone's an operator, not everybody can have an operator gun. So what I've got here is kind of your basic bitch Army M4, uh, but with a couple of enhancements and a couple of enhancements that cost under a thousand bucks, but that will give you some very similar capabilities to, to some of these other rifles uh, that that people that guys are running. Um, so so it's just kind of goes to show you that you don't need to have you don't need to have the most Gucci rifle. You don't need to spend a whole ton of money. Uh, in order to get good capabilities. So the idea behind this is, I mean, this is the issued Aimpoint M Comp M4S M68CCO, properly tied down in, in accordance with SOP, as you can see, same thing, the Army issue, PEC-15. Uh, but we've, what we've added here is the Surefire um, M340V, uh, which is 500 lumen uh, white light, as well as the, um, as well as the DS tail cap uh, with the with dual function tail cap, as well as a remote switch, so that you have that that ambidextrous capability to activate that light. Also, we've talked a lot of in the live streams. You know, we've talked a little bit about it. You know, the, these high mounts are are extremely popular these days, and the ability to have 
some kind of passive aiming capability. Again, that's not a capability. That's not something useful that's limited to, to soft applications or to guys that can you know, put a whole bunch of crap on their rifles. So on this one, shout out once again, we've thrown, thrown on the Unity Fast Riser uh, under, that comp, under that M68 CCO as well as the Unity flip to center uh, Mac 3 power magnifier mount. Um, all of these additions, all of these accessories, like I said, for retail price is under a thousand bucks and you have, you, you've now given yourself the ability to passively aim, you've given yourself a magnification ability and you've given yourself a pretty powerful white light capability with ambidextrous function um, that can probably escape the notice of, of most sergeant majors even. I know, Ephraim's pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, luckily not all sergeant majors are Ephraim. <laughs> that rifle looks good to go, actually. I Dude, like that solid. a lot. Yeah, there ain't a damn thing That's wrong with that. Rifle. I mean, sim simplicity is... <laughs> it's got one optic on it. It's good to go. This motherfucker's got 374 <laughs> optics on it. You need... You need 12 yeah, batteries would, and a fucking... Let me pick this up. Uh, I, also, I would much rather, I'd much rather get smoked by said Star Major doing rifle PT with this <laughs> instead of that. We got, we got day, Smart Ranger and we got Strong week. Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> I went to pick this up and I almost fucking broke my arm. Yeah, man, this is trick. This brings back some memories. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. That's a, that's a legit setup. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yep. yep. Everything you need, nothing you know. Yep. Love it. Just need your woodland BDUs to go with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Troll cap. <laughs> OD green sling. So the last thing I got to show you is just kind of, um, you know, it's Knight's Armament SR-15, 11 and a half inch CQB. Uh, I mean, what is there to really say about that? But what I wanted to show you guys, and I get it, we've got the camera mounted far away so that we can all be in the frame so you guys can't see in too much detail. Uh, but we've got, what we've got is a joint, is, is some prototype units of a joint product that we are developing um, in conjunction with Forward Controls Design. Uh, Roger Wang um, from Forward Controls Design a great friend of the company. Um, and basically they are an M-Lock cable management uh, cable management system. So they are one M lock switch or M lock slot long, uh, and they are omnidirectional. Uh, they have the ability to, they have the ability to accept um, dual cable leads. They have the ability to change the directions of the cable leads, to change the level of the cable leads. Uh, so look for this product soon. Again, we don't have an exact ETA on these. Uh, but they're, they're, they're pretty nifty little, uh, little cable management panels. Um, there have been a lot of m -lock cable management panels that have kind of come out even within like the last six months. Um, they're all good. They all have certain pros and cons. You know, these, uh, again, have, have the benefit of being omnidirectional and they have essentially all in one function. Um, you, you know, a lot of the other cable management panels, you need different types of panels, you need to buy a whole pack of panels in order to do uh, one particular thing to your cable. Whereas these cable management panels will will allow you to do pretty much all of them with one panel. And of course, for for the duck pond guys out there, they are a part of the Dimple Gang. Uh, do they come? Do they all come in Gucci silver? <laughs> uh, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll we'll have a, a couple of bling editions, but they are going to come in uh, FDE and black, um, and they are uh, they they are machined aluminum. Can you bring them a little closer so they can see them? There you go for our, for our live studio audience. <laughs> they're they're pretty slick. They're, they're, Good job, Vanna. You should have ripped one right when you were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Uh, that's a lot of guns. It is a lot of guns. You got a rifle over there? Not yet. <laughs> so, Not yet. So, as we kind of taper out of, <laughs> Sorry, uh, out, out of talking about the carbines, uh, I want to introduce another special guest that we have with us tonight. Uh, this is Thomas Carlson. He's the uh, national sales manager for Light Force USA, um, and he. Uh, so, so you probably saw him during the video on the IR driving lights. Uh, he is. He has been a, a great and close member of the team and the TNVC family. 
Um, so, so when we get to the Q&A portion, and, the, and you'll be joining us for the virtual circle bar, any questions that you have about IR lights uh, or anything like that, you can direct to Thomas. As a matter of fact, some of y'all have probably emailed me about IR lights, and I have forwarded your emails directly to Thomas because I have no fucking clue. They're cool, and they work. Mm -hmm. I spent the night in Thomas's house once. <laughs> <laughs> fun, fun fact. <laughs> with, with IR lights, just with, like everywhere. With just IR lights. Yeah. 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 And, uh, Speaking of um, IR lights, do you guys want to do a giveaway? Yeah, yeah we can do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway. Cool. Cool. So we've got six giveaway packages for you today. And like I said earlier, the giveaway packages are getting better every night. We give away Augie tomorrow night. <laughs> the, hey, one lucky winner gets the 14, the runner up gets Augie. Custom foot locker that he fits into. All right, giveaway package one is a pair of IR strikers by Light Force, a Safarlin range backpack in the color gray, and a Safarlin enhanced three gun bag in the color gray as well. So. A Lucky. lot of good stuff, especially those lights. I am lights, hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping. Yeah, those, <laughs> yeah, my yeah. number gets Fingers called. crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want yeah, my number those called. Are, those are pricey. So six whole... nine two. Oh, nice. A six, low nine, number. Two. Yep. Six nine two. Yep. Six sixty nine two. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do a uh, let's do a quick question. Let's take a question here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't read very well, so let me get the big one. <laughs> Making fun of my glasses last night. Yeah. yeah, well, it's much easier to look at this thing than it is everything else. So, All right. Let's do this. Uh, okay. Any experience with Holosun IR lasers? Um, I don't personally have them. Uh, any experience with Holosun IR I'll lasers? Um, but you size love? Nope. Never no, touched I, one. I haven't, and I don't think we saw any in class this last year. Yeah, we haven't seen them. Uh, I will say, though, that the Holosun as a company as a whole. Uh, yeah, they're up in, they're, somebody had one in the March class, I think. Their optics are pretty good. Um, they hold up extremely well. Certainly use those quite a bit. As far as the lasers, I just don't know. I, I've not used any personally. so. If you want to send us one, we'll be willing to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. The next question is, uh, what suppressors do you guys recommend for running with night vision? Um, sure, surefire. Yeah, say surefire. Yeah. yeah. Surefire. Uh, they it says Bill with his old school halo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, just just go with what the market share is and surefire is probably way to go i'm not knocking any other companies out there there's certainly plenty of good ones but all i have experience with is uh is surefire cans so and oil filters yeah, and baby yeah baby bottles and <laughs> steel wool yeah pillows steel wool and coffee cans yeah <laughs> all right so we have our winner for our giveaway one and that is rich c rich, rich c rich rich you'll be getting an email from us um, congrats on that win. Uh, let's do another. You guys want to do another giveaway? Let's do it. Keep yeah, a couple. Yeah, yeah. So, All right. All right. We got six of them. Twenty-three fifty-nine. Whew. Well, the giveaway. Well, give, let me. Let me. Light Force giveaway what, package number two. Oh, Bill. Let me explain what it is. <laughs> well, now first. I already know. Uh, well, now I already knows. <laughs> All right. So giveaway package two is a set of Rock Forty visible lights from Light Force. A Safarlin range backpack in FDE and an enhanced three gun bag in FDE. What was that number again, Bill? 2359. 2359. And that is Griffin H. Griffin H. Griffin, you'll be getting an email from us shortly. Congrats on that. Congrats. Uh, let's see. You actually get me getting an email at the end of the week. You know, somebody somebody said on the comments uh, that they would like to have an Augie plaid shirt giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like one that's been 
war in a few days. Authentic. Well, what we could do right now, and this is not a joke, is <laughs> Augie could give away his shoes, specifically the left one that has dog shit all over the bottom of it, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm smelling it over here. It's all over, it's all over the fucking the fuck? carpet. I, I was like, what's going on? I was like, what the fuck's going on? I was like, holy shit. And it's all over the carpet. Shit. You do have dog shit. Oh, bro, fucking go out there. No, 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 <laughs> Wait, were we talking last night about like if anybody wants to win that shoe, <laughs> put it in the comments. We'll send it. We'll put that shit in the box tonight. I promise. <laughs> Ooh. So, Ooh. all right. This show has no budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It does have a dog running around here, though. <laughs> Leave it to Augie, the only motherfucker to step in dog shit. <laughs> the only my one. Shoes. I was like, is it me? How did you find dog shit here? We're in a warehouse. I mean, it was probably when I went out to smoke. (laughs) Again, some lucky winner tomorrow night gets Augie. I'll give you a shirt, too, since you asked for it. You get the shirt and the shoe. Bonus giveaway. Oh, man. Uh, this is a good question. You should show tonight. that dog it shit was. to the camera. <laughs> show that dog shit to the camera. It's fucking over there now. I think a chunk of... I think a chunk of the wall, wall. yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, nasty. <laughs> yeah, we should... Somebody said do a TNBC calendar <laughs> with Augie and a different plaid for each month. <laughs> That's pretty good. In December, is just a picture of the bottom of that dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the 2020 calendar. They said if you include some DC MBS of the shoe, they'll take it. Oh, Jesus. There we go. <laughs> just pack a DC MBS with the dog shit. Yeah, so, yeah clean it up. Uh, all right, so... <laughs> We have a lot of questions about uh, night vision driving, and I know that there was some some content on that. But uh, we're going to let Thomas talk about what he thinks the best light setups are for driving, or a general overview of the light force yeah. options for driving with nods. Absolutely. So, our our signature flagship product is definitely the infrared strikers. Um, TNVC currently sells them in a pair. Um, you can run them as a pair. We would kind of recommend that if you're driving anything over 30, 40 and through the deserts and stuff like that. Um, 100% made in Australia. Um, they currently come in 850 nanometer. Um, for special requests, we can get them in 940 as well. Um, one key thing we did with this was we recessed the LEDs so far back. So the typical red glow that you kind of see out of 850s, yeah. you can't see out of these unless you're like directly head on with them. So any slight can't to the, to the light, there's no signature at all, which, right. is, which is unique to, to infrared driving light. So yeah. um, from my experience, the 850s seem a little bit brighter in general than the 940 spectrum mm-hmm. um, under white FOSS and green FOSS type thing. Um, but yeah, made in Australia, built like tanks, uh, by far, these are these are our signature product here. Uh, what do those run for a pair? Uh, MSRP is uh, six fifty, but I think TMVC has them marked down a little bit right now. Okay. So they're they're selling them at map price, which is which is below MSRP, which is good. So um, they they definitely have the lowest price for them too. So Perfect. if you have like a side by side M razors, golf carts, smaller stuff that requires less light. Like ATV. ATVs, yep. Skateboards. Um, skateboards, mopeds, <laughs> <laughs> um, trikes. Um, <laughs> these are our Rock 40s. And, uh, yeah, Rock 40s are awesome. They're great. All you need to do is night vision go kart driving, go kart racing. You can go oh, already, on it, right across, <laughs> already on it, bro. Across the bucket street. You can go that's there tomorrow true. night. Um, these come in a flood or a spot configuration, and uh, they're great for, for small application stuff. A lot of guys that we're seeing now are putting these on ditch light brackets, like on Tacomas mm-hmm. and Forerunners and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, like an outward. Like, yeah, kind of an can't. outward flood, essentially, the, which is good for that. And then your primary driving ones mm-hmm. are the infrared strikers. So 
as far as like distance goes, you can expect the flood of the rock 40s to probably i'd say 80 90 yards no problem mm -hmm. uh the the spots will hit out to about 300 yards wow. so they're pretty bright for how Jeez, small yeah. these guys are uh, and the strikers like they'll out exceed your night vision capability so sure, those, those things are, are bad like 900 thousand yards like no problem Oof. so depending 900, on 900 000? 000 yards. <laughs> that's like almost a million <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's almost a million yards right <laughs> Uh, what's cool too about the strikers, we, we make several different filter systems. Uh, these, you can get a flood uh, lens cover for it. So if you do want to run these in a flood capacity for a more closer up situation, um, you can just put those sacrificial lenses on mm -hmm. uh, and filters and, and it'll work that way. What about the Rock 40s? Do they come with like a darker lens or is it just Yeah, they're, t clear? they're actually tinted. Ah, okay. Yep. So, so have, the lighting is what's making it look kind of clear to the camera. Though. Yeah, so they actually, it's hard to see from the camera, but they're they are tinted like a really dark tint. Not black like the strikers are, but they do have a, a dark sheen Like to a them. smoke to them. I see it now. Yep, yeah. yep. So yeah. we're going to do, uh, for, for Overland Expo again, are we going to do another like, like night driving experience Absolutely. Like we did last time? Absolutely, yeah. Last year, we, we can actually talk about it. We had Chuck Pressburg out and did, or two years ago now, a night vision driving kind of symposium. And we had roughly, I think, 10 or 14 trucks um, kitted out with yeah. all this kind of stuff. And we did a bunch of land nav and uh, geocache finding that we had a team go high geocaches during the day. Um, and we were in Cinder's OHV, which is like a volcanic brock area with like hundreds of acres to go drive around on and Flagstaff? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. And uh, what was crazy when the, it's all because that volcanic rocks like black. So it yes. just soaks yeah. any moonlight up that there is. Right. And then there's a bunch of trees and forests. So definitely when yeah. you would go under the trees without those, even dual tube white foss goggles, like you can't see anything. Yeah. It's like super dark. Uh -huh. Well, and, and the ash was w w was really was really interesting too because and and that gave us you know the opportunity to kind of talk to people about different you know different reflectivities of different surfaces mm -hmm. and and ir illumination and how it affects you know different different kinds of materials and stuff like that so mm -hmm. so it's actually a great place to do that again i don't know if you call it demonstration experience yeah um, yeah but uh yeah because that the even when you had the IR lights on, like the ash soaked it all up because it's so porous. And, yeah. and mm -hmm. um, like a lot of people don't know this, but a volcano, that's just Mother Earth uh, smoking a cigarette, man. <laughs> it's just Mother Earth chiefing on a Winston. So, so that's all that is. So I'll tell you what, too. It was, it was an interesting experience. Uh, so TNBC went to Overland Expo uh, with Light Force uh, two years ago during this event that, that, that Thomas is talking about. So I kind of felt like, I got, you know those dudes that come that you know those dudes that, that show up to the booth and say you know look at our night vision gear and they're Tell like dude yeah. well no, no no the ones that are like <laughs> like dude like I've used this stuff but I don't know anything about it I just use what they handed me yeah and, and but but I don't know anything about like what's available what's good what's bad so that was I mean I've been in motorized units my entire career so so overlanding in that sense but i didn't know shit about shit at mm -hmm. overland expo uh and and it was really interesting to to be in that position because usually when i go to a trade show usually when i go to the trade show i'm you know doing this i'm just talking forever and ever and ever yeah. about you know yeah, the shit true. that i know about um, that's fucking true. But so my ass shows up to Overland Expo, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. I was issued lots of stuff. I know how to use that stuff, but I don't know jack shit about any of it. Yeah. How about you know, I, I would <laughs> like to talk about it. Yeah, I would like to talk about that event, though. Uh, didn't you crash a vehicle at that event? <laughs> Yeah, I dumped over Tom's little, uh, little little motorbike that he had. The only Asian out of the bunch, and this motherfucker crashes the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Bow! Yeah. It was during the day, though. Not yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I had night vision, it been He's all like, great. These IR yeah. lights don't work for his beams. <laughs> yeah. The man needed some night vision. That's all it was. I got you. Um, so... Thomas, uh, are there any light bar IR lights planned for the future? There are, actually. Um, 
So one, I'll talk about light bar versus this configuration real quick because a lot of people ask for light bars. So yeah. with a light bar, you can't get the lens reflector as deep. Yep. So therefore, you can't throw the light as far. Yep. yep. So if we if we were to make a infrared light bar, even a 50 inch dual row bar, the max it would probably go is 400 yards. That's it. And it would be hell. And it would be expensive. and it would be huge. And it would take up like a ton of room, right? And Where it'd be loud. Two of these little guys will yeah. outperform a 50 inch dual row light bar all day long. And yeah. they're much smaller, weight, you know, just right. overall lower signature in general. So. Yeah. Um, we do get a lot of requests for bars for like fitment reasons, and I think we're going to come out with some just to, you yeah. know, fulfill the fitment Give side the of it. Give the customer what they want. Exactly. What they want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, totally but cool. as far as performance goes, a light bar will never outperform this style or even our more round style lights that we have. Uh, they just will. They just don't have the uh, the lens technology built into them. Right. So. Yep. Plus, you know, with those, you get to independently angle those as you want. So you can do yeah. like a straight up, you know, just like two beams straight ahead, mm -hmm. or you can overlap them and slightly angle them outward, depending mm -hmm. on what you want to do. Which you can't do that with a light bar. You just get what you get. A couple other things that are built into this. If you look at this mount here, mm -hmm. it's made out of a like high-end, super thick reinforced ABS plastic. Yeah where a lot of light bars have steel mounts on the end and steel mounts on the bottom. So when you're going across, you know, b bumpy terrain, you get that shakiness yeah. that kind of makes you sick and you just want to turn your lights off and not use them. Yeah. So this mount eliminates almost all of that. Okay. So you get no shaky light rattling mm -hmm. going down the trail. Mm -hmm. And I guess we could probably make similar mounts for a light bar, but they're just not as common. Sure. Um, and these mounts are actually reversible, so you can flip them around to offset the light farther away from your bumper or bring it in closer. Oh, and, oh wow, that's really, uh, that's a good which is, capability which is good. to have. Um, but can you run over it with a truck? Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Uh, one other cool thing, there's 16 LEDs in this light. If one becomes compromised or two, or let's say a round or a rock or something were to like completely catastrophically hit, go, break this lens and go in there, the, the rest will still continue to run. Uh, so they're all so wired independently. Mm, too. So it's not like my yeah. fucking Christmas tree light. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. One bulb goes out, the whole tree is gone. Yeah, and that's common. Yeah, a lot of really a lot of other that. like lighting sure. products. One LED yeah. goes bad. The yeah. whole the heart, whole bar will go down and stuff like that. So yeah. um, all of our products are not wired that way. So they they have that redundancy built into them. Perfect. Oh, cool. So yeah, that's awesome, man. So that's that's awesome. Facts. All right. And this is why subject matter expertise is useful. All right. Uh, you know what would be rad? Putting that on a rifle. That'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Toting around a 12 well, volt You guys want to do another giveaway? Let's bag. do another giveaway. Yeah. All right. Giveaway pack three is. I can't read that. It's a weapons please. outfitters oh. package. <laughs> Who wrote that? Uh, <laughs> Ant? So provided by uh, our, our good friend Roy Lynn over at Weapons Definitely. Outfitters. Um, it includes a Sons of Liberty Gunworks 13.7 inch barrel uh, and Knox muzzle device combination. Ooh, a Weapons Outfitter swag pack. Uh, one of these um, ACAs, ACS trigger mag pouches uh, in FDE. A TNVC Tor Mini, Ooh, a Liberty's Defense Suppressor Cover, oh, dang. and a 36-inch rifle case Ooh, by Safariland and FDE. Money. So you basically just get a whole upper setup completely <laughs> kitted out. In a bag. Minus yeah. the upper, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You actually okay. need the upper receiver, but but yeah, well, it's of course you it's do. a pretty pretty yeah, nice little package, I would is. say. You can still beat the shit out of somebody with a barrel, though. Yeah, <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Just take a lot longer. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get well, a number. Also, on with this. an open tied muzzle device, you can scrape dog shit off your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> number uh, forty-two. Forty-two. Yeah. Low number. Woo. Low number. Yeah, low number. I like it. Pays pays to sign up early. Yeah, that's right. I did in yeah. this case. Yeah. So. And one five five six round. <laughs> that's that's the big prize right there. Uh, so, looks looks like, like it is. The winner is Tony S. Nice. Stark. Congratulations, Tony, Tony S. Stark. Maybe? Tony no. Stark. Yeah. No, Tony S. Tony, you'll be getting an email from us. Check your spam folder. <laughs> uh, you have two minutes to claim it. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm taking it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool.
That's a good question, man. Uh, well, there. <clears throat> oh, uh, somebody wanted to talk about what the run, the, what the runtime is on the mini. This little hour spotlight here. So you'll get a little over seven hours with the infrared enforcer. And that's the infrared enforcer, right? Yep. Okay, sweet. Yep. What's the distance again on that that that'll reach out to? The IR side, uh, easily up past a thousand yards, no problem. I think it's cool. It it almost yeah. like outsees how far you can see with your night vision. Yeah. So, and it has a really cool Fresnel reflector on the front, which really just yep. helps amplify the beam more. Yep. Um, you can spin that front thing to go from a wide to a spot beam mm -hmm. pattern. Um, there's a fuel gauge built into the bottom part right there. Yeah. Nice you job, can push that. <laughs> yep, I know, right? Yeah. And, uh, there's a bunch of variants of this. This is the one that TMBC carries, and it's can select between red and IR. Um, yeah. We also make versions that you can go it's to. It's like a 1911. Like, four color spectrum, <laughs> so red, white, <laughs> yellow, it, yeah. um, green. What about um, see, one see that's the one you want to. That's the one you want to uh, uh, <laughs> mount on your rifle. I mean, no. it's set up like like a vertical grip and everything. All right. right. If you don't want to pay for them all, yeah. I guess. Yep. I want one of these in ultraviolet <laughs> light so that I can it's take great. when we travel. <laughs> so yeah, I, can, yeah. I just want to search the room at once. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> just open the door, work. search it. And, no, this one's good to go. It's got stuff all over the bed. I'm good with it. So. Wait, what? Hey, man, that yeah. thing weighs like. Yeah, what it, like ten ounces, man? It's yeah, barely, it doesn't weigh like yeah. anything. You could put that thing on a carabiner and like. Just oh yeah, and just hang it on your off pack. Your, yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 that thing is cool. And if you needed extended runtime for whatever reason, they do actually make a battery pack that clamps to the bottom of that and plugs into the charging port. Right back and here. Gives you oh, another. Nice. So you can put it. You can like put a stendo on the bottom. Yeah, of it and it and it will just sit on a table and stuff, and uh, that like doubles the runtime. So. Yeah, that thing. Is yeah, that thing's so cool. Doubles as a heat lamp. Did we ever answer what the actual runtime was? I think that's how. This a little over started. seven hours. A little bit, yeah, a little yep. seven hours. And it's not that expensive either. No, two forty something, I think, right around two hundred forty. And you're saying it's outperforming the Hellfire, right? Oh yeah. 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 They, they, on, yeah. on the IR side. <laughs> yeah. 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 How much is a Hellfire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's why I said, if you can't afford them all, yeah. if you can't afford them all, just grab one of these things, and do you don't need a 5590 or a vehicle to, yeah, to operate it. truck to yeah. carry it around. So, yeah. Hey, quick, bring up that Humvee so we can run this light. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good value. It's 100% made in Australia, too, so it's uh, yeah. it's of quality. Yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah. All the Light Force stuff is just super impressive. It might be our cool. our student correction device. Yeah. Like in classes. <laughs> oh, you would overwhelm. Uh, Look right here. <laughs> yeah. well, why is he smoking? Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. also, also a piece of kit that's begging for a coat of paint. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's yeah. take a few more questions, and then we'll roll into another giveaway. Um, PBS 14 housing kits, no one ever sells any. That's a great question. Um, I believe that you know right now with all the demand, we just need all of the ones we can get. Um, yeah, I mean we sell them. We do sell them. Um, they will say back order or whatever because they're not sitting on the shelf technically. Um, they are, but they aren't. So you can order them on our website. Um, you can also order lenses and all that stuff separately. Uh, you can totally get them on our website. It's just that uh, instead of saying in stock, they'll say you know, available for back order and they'll give you a lead time. Sometimes that lead time might be like a few days and sometimes it might be like two or three weeks, just depending. But yeah, we sell them, but also we don't really push that and advertise that right now. We used to, uh, cause there's plenty of folks that like to, to do the homegrown thing, but, uh, we're, we're using all the components we can to fulfill to you guys' orders. Um, yeah. and that's just the way it goes. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think? Another giveaway? Now let's do another question, man. Okay, another question. Bill uh, wants to answer yeah. another question. Yeah. <laughs> Difference between Carson and Harris PBS 14 housings. They're both DOD manufacturers. I mean, they, I, there, there are some slight cosmetic differences between right. them. I think one of them has like silver contacts, while all the other ones got like more brass colored contacts. Yeah. Functionally, though, they're, they're DOD contract approved housings. Yeah, and you know, uh, did, did you know that, Chris? It's again, <laughs> they. I didn't know that. <laughs> those are two companies wow. that make housings for DOD, so they have to meet the profile of what is needed. So it's essentially apples to apples. Yeah. Um, that's about it. They do the same exact thing. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, and that does kind of kind of uh, raise a, a question or raise an issue. You, you know, what does mil spec really mean? I mean, obviously, people talk about mil spec in so many different contexts. We even talk about them in t in, co in ter terms of the the tubes, um, at the the tube specs and the tube performance. But you know, mil spec also means interchangeable and, and and there's there's a component of interchangeability to it and that's whether you're talking about like an M4A1, any component made by Colt or FNMI needs to be interchangeable. And it's the same thing with PVS fourteens. You know, you should you need to be able to take a Carson uh, power supply, the, the the battery compartment and be able to install it on on an L three uh, on an L3 housing or vice versa. Same thing with, with all of the optics. You know, they, they have to have that interchangeability to be within the mil spec. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, apples to apples again. Uh, let's see. You know, Chris, let's give you some spotlight here, man. Um, there Got been <laughs> all, right. all right. We're done. <laughs> there have been quite a lot of folks because they know that you're running the, uh, the joint training center yeah. over at uh, Blue Force Gear. They want to know what classes do you offer and what's your schedule looking like this year so far? Um, right now my schedule's chock full, unfortunately, of uh, closed enrollment courses. Uh, I do, however, have quite a few hosted instructors coming in in the month of February. Actually, Don Edwards and crew are doing a night vision CQB course. Don Edwards, the JTA. Green Light Tactical, uh, yep. night vision CQB at Blue Force Gear. Yep, that's coming up in February, but uh, I currently don't have any anything open enrollment scheduled. I'm hoping to get that on the schedule by June. So hopefully between June and, and December this year, we'll have uh, much more open enrollment uh, CQB courses and things like that going on in the JTF. Talk about the facility and what capabilities you guys have. Uh, well, first and foremost, we're in Savannah, Georgia, um, which is just a cool town to come hang out in. Uh, very cool town but since it is in savannah georgia the, it's indoors which is great because yep. i don't have to worry about bugs i don't have to worry about the heat you no know sunscreen. don't have to worry about the humidity yep, yep. you don't and, have to worry about stepping in dog shit yep uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep debatable uh but also uh, as it pertains to like probably the people watching this uh i dig it because if you come to like don edwards class or in the future if i'm running stuff similar at nine o'clock in the morning oh, lights go out and we can do solid NVG training during the day where your body's not like yeah. already freaking taking a crash because it's late and you're not working reverse cycles and stuff. So yep. in like a two day course, you know, you're, you're looking at getting 16 to 18 solid hours under nods, like in a training environment, you know, That's which, awesome. which, you know, doing outside NVG training, you got, you guys, we kind of need to worry about the weather and atmospheric effects and what time it gets dark and all that kind of stuff. Point but of diminishing returns. It's good so, for all you yeah. white people. But yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, the facilities, you know, it's not huge. It's, it's four, four big rooms, two transverse hallways, all modular, got a stairwell and uh, things like that. Catwalk. But it's cozy, but yeah, it's catwalk, all that stuff. We film, we fill it with smoke if anybody actually had the balls to, to do gas mask smoke training, but so far, no takers. Yeah. <laughs> great, great pro shop. Yeah, great pro shop that nobody knows about because it doesn't advertise. It's basically just for the students that come to courses. And uh, <laughs> if folks want to learn more about the facility or the classes that are being offered, where do they go? Oh, man, right now, I'm, a, I'm only up on social media, uh, JTF underscore BFG. Insta, same thing on Facebook. Uh, I don't post much because I'm terrible at it, uh, but I do post like course announcements. And, and shit. people can DM you there, right? Yeah, absolutely. So JTF underscore BFG yeah. at Instagram. Yep. Or, and Instagram. Facebook. Same yeah, and thing. Facebook, same yeah. thing. Slide into his DMs. Slide yeah. into them DMs. <laughs> Good deal. All come, right. Come to Savannah, do some drinking, do some night vision CQB in. Not yeah, simultaneously. Yeah, no, <laughs> later. Like, well, you can day drink in Savannah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I see a I see a um, a quick uh, question in the chat. I'll, I'll take care of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Go All right. Well, uh, right. no, right. I'll, take care of you. I'll take care of it. I'll DM you later. No. Uh, <clears throat> they bought a um, an ITT PBS fourteen years ago from TMEC. Works great. But they think they might need to send it in for servicing, purge, you know, all that kind of stuff. Do we do that? Absolutely, we do it. 
um, sales at tmbc.com. Give us your name and your original invoice number. We may still have it on file. We'll get with you. Uh, we'll tell you how exactly where to send it to. We'll tell you what the fee is to, to purge and look it over and all that good stuff. And we'll take care of it for you. Our turnaround time's relatively quick because we do have some um, special persons that can do that for you as uh, like an amended task, AKA Sam Houston. Can do that special. for you. Yeah. Um, Very special. Person. Sam Houston doesn't have to uh, be a full-time uh, technician anymore. So he has the luxury of being able to do that um, as needed. And he has a full facility yeah. um, at his remote office and he can take care of you and you have a direct point of contact and all that good stuff. So yes, absolutely, we can do it. Yeah. Um, let's see, they're asking about any West Coast training affiliates for TMBC. Oh. Uh, I, I mean, Don's out in Vegas now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll be, we'll be out in Vegas, we'll be out in Montana. Pretty um, much, yeah, we'll be out, we'll, we do some stuff out West, uh, but not much. But all of the folks that are ambassadors or affiliates of us, um, Travel, Kinetic Consulting, Green Line Tactical, um, uh, Press Check Consulting, those guys all travel. Uh, they're traveling instructors. So check their specific um, calendars and they'll get you squared away. Now to what classes and to when and all that stuff, that's on them, we don't know. If you're super motivated, just host a class. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're super motivated, host your own class. All right, let's do a giveaway. What one are we on? Giveaway four? Number four. Safarland no, package yeah. number one. All right. Safarland package number one is a $250 gift card to Safarland and a 36-inch and a 46-inch bag in FDE or black. So you choose, I suppose. Is that how that's written? One or the other. You're gonna one get is black one and one is FDE. One is black and one is FDE. <laughs> and they are both bags. <laughs> They're dual rifle cases in, yes. in FDE or black. And package number four and package number five are identical other than the color of the bag. Gotcha. Okay, well, <laughs> yes. Okay, so, so let's, so let's go ahead and pick two names. And, and uh, since, they're, since they're similar giveaway packages. Okay, so we got 4642. And 1945. Good year. Toasty in the Far East. Yeah. So <laughs> while we're, we're waiting, <laughs> while we're waiting, I, I often talk about this and have this debate internally. Uh, what is the best night vision movie scene that you guys have seen? Best as in like? It can be anything. Realistic you, or you best as in? You make your point. Okay. You All make right. your point. <laughs> I got it. Uh, 1945. Um, cool. I'll start. Yeah. Um, the night vision scene on Step Brothers, where uh, <laughs> he pulls out the night vision, and they're like, extra strength night vision goggles. <laughs> These would have been awesome when we were kids. Even better. We got them when we're 40. <laughs> that is my favorite uh, night vision scene in any movie. Uh yeah. What about you, uh, Bill? Oh, yeah. Because somebody else, I gotta think on this for a second. Mm. You call Let's yourself see. a subject matter expert on night vision? Yes, I do. I do. I do have goggles. <laughs> yes. So I can, I'm qualified well, to yeah. teach. Yeah. You have there a single go. tube. Go ahead. Goggle. Me? Yeah. All right. Uh, probably the scene in the groundbreaking film called U.S. Navy Seals where God the sniper God the sniper is ah, yeah. shooting yeah. through the he's wall got, he's got like an old like freaking tin or something on there and it and on that Barrett you know and he's like I got nothing on night vision switching to thermals and he just like pushes a button sees the dudes through through like three feet of concrete wall yeah and just punches both of them like yeah that's that's the, that's the reason I joined the military right there it's like Charlie Sheen <laughs> yeah it was Charlie Sheen Hawk, you mean Hawkins yeah. Oh, goodness. Man. <laughs> about you, Augie? So, uh, it, it's maybe not the best scene, but I guess my favorite scene is probably the one in uh, Silence of the Lambs because it, yeah, it captures that kind of like claustrophobia of uh, of being being under nods pretty well. 
The cluster, yeah, okay, like the restricted field of view. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get you. Okay, okay. The because f- usually when you watch night vision oh. scenes in movies, like yeah. it's so like 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 you, you get panoramic vision out of it, and they turn, they they just tint the whole screen green, and I usually breathe that heavy like yeah, they did on the movie in there. too. Yeah, like he like he was breathing on the movie. I usually breathe that heavy <laughs> when I put on night vision goggles. <sighs> <sighs> you know, I, I'm gonna go with. Uh, and, and the fanboys out there are going to love this, but uh, Zero Dark Thirty. Never seen I'd it. agree that was. One I, I, well. I think I think yeah. when you watch like their uh, how they how they did the raid, I, you know everybody thinks that you're going to run and and you know you've made all this noise and everything else, but you know I think it really demonstrates like that you don't have. It's to definitely do. probably more than less realistic. Scene. It's the most realistic, realistic scene. That yeah, that, that's but uh, that, uh, it, it's something you can appreciate. As to, um, you know, it's it's not always fast. It's not running. It's not. I mean, you know, they they're deliberate. They're 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 communicating well, and uh, and I think it gives a good to somebody who doesn't have a lot of knowledge or experience with it. It really showed like true um, usage of it. And I want to say coming up the stairwell, that, like I think some guys might have had thirty ones. They were cutting two or something like through the goggles, you know, and you could tell, obviously, like, there's there's lesser yeah. width on that. Yeah. And then there's some guys that obviously have the pano stuff, so, mm-hmm. but I thought that was kind of cool. Would have been 15s back then, guys. Yeah. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the fastest you guys have ever driven under night vision? And what was it that you were driving? Hmm. Probably a Toyota Corolla. Or maybe it would have been a sriracha. <laughs> Did it say taxi, yeah. sriracha. taxi on the top was it white yeah. and orange? Trying, trying to get from freaking Kandahar to, to Kabul at night. Like, just fucking. I have no Pegged. idea how fast I was going, but Pegged it was too out. fast. Yeah. yeah. Pegged out way yep. too fast. Yep. It's One like mistake that, in your toast. Yeah. It's yeah. like that scene from Jay and Silent Bob. He's like, gears. Like, the yeah. yard car is just like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just pegged. Yeah, we d- definitely didn't have no fucking IR lights or nothing on it. <laughs> just go. <Yeah. laughs> Which that brings up um, a lot of, I mean, a lot of folks are asking, and I saw it in the chat, um, what's the best way to black out the interior of a vehicle when you're driving under nods? <laughs> Start just, pulling fuses. It's fucking arts and crafts hour. Yeah, <laughs> cardboard tape and, and cardboard electrical tape. Shit all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> cardboard and electrical tape, and you're good to go. Um, and people are like, well, I still I can't see how fast I'm going. Well, you're driving under fucking knots. Yeah. yeah. Like, you're already breaking the law. So, like, <laughs> you might as well take it to the limit, you know? Yeah, My, get, a, get a cardboard cutout, you know, and just so you, so you can hide it behind your right passenger seat. So you, you just go. pull it out, pop it in, yep. turn your lights off, you're good to go. I think th- yeah. there, there have been some guys that I've talked to. I haven't gotten around to doing it myself, but they, they take, like, yoga mats, like, like the dense foam. And, and they put it in there, and I guess it, because it's tacky yeah, enough, yeah. it sticks pretty well. Huh. And, Fucking sweaty so yoga mat. I, eventually, I'd like, like to do meat. that with. Uh, Give me a sweaty <laughs> yoga mat and just fucking <laughs> slap somebody. I, you with know, it. one thing I could say about pulling fuses and trying to do cutoff switches for your brakes, all that stuff. So, and I've wired vehicles a lot through Light Force, but I was talking to Chuck about it, and Chuck Pressburg with Press Check Consulting, he's done a lot of night vision driving, and he he was telling me stories where. They've pulled fuses. They've you know got cars pulled fuses out, and next thing you know, like the seatbelt lock, yeah, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Seat, but like, like yeah. weird stuff starts happening yeah. with yeah. the car when you yep. start pulling fuses yep. and electronics and stuff. So like, you don't want to do that. If you can like duct tape cardboard blankets, like you know more like easier stuff to to deal with. I think. Well, and, and and blue painters tape is the bottom layer. Yep. Yep. When we did the night vision driving symposium, we took blue painters tape on the tail lights. And covered most of it up, and le- just left a little teeny slit, slit. so you can still see when people are hitting yep. the brakes. And then we layered normal black duct tape mm-hmm. over the the blue tape, so then you could pull it off your light your tail lights easy. Mm-hmm. I think one guy didn't, and uh, he has like <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, he's out from there for like a residue two nights in a row trying to get it yeah, yeah, yeah. get the duct tape got off. some baby yeah. oil from Tom so, so so speaking of which you know there. shout out uh, uh, Chuck Pressburg was supposed to be a, a a remote special guest for us, but uh, he is he he had some some power issues at his home, so we're uh, we're, we're rooting for you, Chuck. But but. <laughs> It's weird, you know, uh, power is out at your house, but I, I know you have a cell phone, bro. 
<laughs> and he's probably got like five sources of power. Yeah, yeah. and I know you have all those. Uh, he's probably watching us. Goal zero, um, <laughs> friggin'. Yeah, I know you got all that overlanding gear, bro. You could you could crank up that generator. He's got the old like hand generator. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I think my the fastest. Well, I won't go with fastest. I'll do. What's the weirdest thing I've driven in odds is a uh, is a scooter. <laughs> um, like a little Vespa scooter, and it was in my old neighborhood. It was actually me and Trent Zimmer from Unity, Unity Tactical. Tactical. Yeah. And uh, there's some footage out there somewhere about about it, but Trent got uh, an airsoft gun that had like the infrared BBs and was doing like mini drive-bys on things on the scooter under nods. <laughs> so we took turns riding around, uh, riding a scooter under nods. I'm telling you, man, that thing's a true sleeper. You, you can ride through a neighborhood and just freak some people out. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, night, night vision go-kart racing is, is what we've got to do. Yeah. I told Who you, was man, telling the story the other night? Someone was driving down some fire road with nods on. and That's the Tom Austin. Battery yeah, went battery. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He about wrecked the truck. <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. doing Two about bitches. 60 mile an hour. Smashed yep, through a fence. Yeah. Went over yeah. a berm, I, uh, cleared through a fence, and uh, finally brought it to a stop. That's right. But, <laughs> yep. Yeah, during Emerald Warrior in a in a razor. Yeah, uh, we were we were going fast enough to um, yeah. kill yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's just say you got pretty. A into razor it. is intense. Pretty to be going pretty, fast on anyway. Pretty fast and uh, pretty scary. Yeah. Well. No. No thanks. Count me out. I'll, I'll do a scooter before I do a razor. <laughs> Oh, geez. Um, all right, so let's announce these winners for uh, giveaway pack four and five. Um, giveaway four is Adam M. Adam M. Adam, we'll be sending you an email. Uh, and giveaway five is Justin T. Justin T. Same thing. We'll be reaching out to you. Congrats Just on those time. wins. Just Sweet. Congrats on those wins. Yeah. Um, yeah, Safari Land yeah. killed it with the support, man. They did. Yeah. That was awesome. Safari Land so, killed it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, all the sponsors killed oh, it. Oh, they did. <laughs> Safari Land sent like 400 boxes of things. <laughs> FedEx it, FedEx had to bring an, an, an extra truck to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> damn, dude. That's a lot of stuff. Um, so one of my pet peeves is uh, people that professionally carry a gun for a living. Um, like you are, you've sworn an oath and you carry a gun for a living. Um, and you, you don't like to, yeah, no, that's one it. of my pet peeves is, um, about, about folks. Well, I, then I can hate myself. The number of years so that's like, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> um, it's that, a brave new world guys. Yeah. All this gear and all this stuff is cool. Uh, but you know, physical health and mental health is, is number one priority in my opinion. Um, Indian, not the arrow type thing. And I know that usually applies to skill level, but also um, if you just can't do it, you just can't do it. Now, I'm going to just say some things that are controversial here, but <laughs> it's to get the people going. So if you don't agree with me, chime in and, and tell me what your idea of this is. I think that anyone that carries a gun for a living, like you've sworn an oath to protect someone, something, the general public, foreign and domestic, whatever. I think if, you, if you're an adult and you can't run a mile in eight minutes, that's a serious problem. Um, so I've thought long and hard on it. Eight minutes is my, is my hard. You just got to run one mile, just one of them. It can be the <laughs> ugliest mile you've ever run, but it better be one. Now, I, people are like, that's petty. I don't know, man. It's like a, it's like a pizza delivery. You got to draw a line somewhere. It's like I live one mile across from where you stop delivering. Well, no. I mean, we got to stop somewhere, right? So that's where I draw the line. Eight-minute mile. Eight-minute mile. Interesting analogy. An eight-minute mile. What do you guys think? I I will. I'll counterpoint it. Okay. And say that <laughs> running breeds cowardice. Sure. So don't practice it. You sure. Know, do it when you need to do it, but don't practice it. Right. You know, nothing wrong with some sprints. Uh, so I'll I'll say four hundred meter sprint. Okay. Followed up by... Wait, wait. Full gear, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Full okay. gear. All right. So I got whatever, track. Whatever that it means to you. Okay. Right? 400 meter dead sprint, two times body weight deadlift at the end. Two times body weight deadlift? Yep. Okay. Yeah. 
yep. just because I don't want to run a mile. So stamina. So all that was because I don't want to run a mile. Stamina yeah. and yeah. just <laughs> friggin' brute strength. Yep, yep. And you just got to do it one Explosive, time, right? Explosive power. Two yeah, times? One time. Yeah. Or if you have a partner, it would be a 400-meter sprint. Yep. And then a th- I called a two-minute all-out round of fighting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that, people sometimes are like, what are your fitness goals? Like, my fitness goal is to run 400 meters and then beat the fuck out of somebody. That's it. That's that's the fitness goal. So At the, the end of to the truly emulate team. this, we need to have Augie go 400 meters. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then Chris, you run to him and beat the shit out of him <laughs> yeah. for, for having dog shit yeah. on his shoe. Yeah. And meanwhile, Eric, Eric will be running an eight minute mile to go yeah. to yeah. 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 hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I mean, that's a great. That's a great. <laughs> you back that up. That's that sound logic. I like it. I dig cool. it. How about you, Augie? I mean, I don't see anything wrong with the logic. I think uh, for some people, just being able to run a mile is, uh, is 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 maybe a goal that they need to work at first before running the eight minute mile. Uh, but you know, we are talking about arm professionals, but so I think it's sound logic. And I'm looking at the feedback here. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at the feedback here, and uh, Eric must die. It hmm. seems like most folks agree with me. Uh, it seems like most folks agree with me. So, you know, yay me. Ep- Ephraim <laughs> says one mile, but you have to sing cadence. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not singing shit when I'm running, bro. I'm breathing in and breathing out. One foot in front of the other. What about you, Bill? You're uh, a runner, so yeah, you I'm should agree runner. with me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know... I, I, I think the whole, you know, physical conditioning breeds emotional and mental conditioning. So, oh, yeah. you know, you find what works for you, uh, you know, if you're a runner, if you're a lifter or whatever. And I mean, being physically fit is, is if you're going to, if you're a professional yep. and, and you, you know, and you, you, know, you should, you know, take care of your body so that you can, you know, be emotionally and mentally fit as well that's kind of my opinion is Mm -hmm. you know you gotta you gotta be able to back it up and and it's proven that you know the better shape you are the better you handle stress which Mm -hmm. means you're gonna make better decisions when you're yep when you're under under pressure well i mean also if you you can't if you can't run a mile or if you can't run an eight minute mile i mean if you will you know take a look at the gear it's it's gonna take a toll on your body as well you know yeah yeah Yeah, that's true what's your what's your fastest mile eric Oh. Uh, we'll throw it out there. Sub six. I don't recall, but sub six for yeah. sure. Yeah. So tomorrow we'll do it. We'll do Eric and I will run a mile. Yeah. And uh, we'll see if he can break and, even. And like. Chris and I will sit here and drink beer. And, and, and Augie <laughs> and Chris will fight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After yeah. Running. No, I mean, fastest, I don't know, sub six, but that's when I was probably 23, yeah. early 20s, somewhere around there, sub six. Oh, shit, you want to bring that that shit in? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. I'm not trying to be the best at, like, running. Exercising. Yeah, I'm not trying to be the best at exercising. <laughs> you know, I, I do. I'm yeah. trying to get the blood flowing. Yeah. Like, I play a sport. <laughs> to, yeah. to, to your point, though, uh, Eric, hmm? let's see here. As soon as the... Oh, you're going to bring up your running app. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that was yesterday. Oh, 801. 801. Can't, you won't make the cut. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done. So it's a good I'm thing a, you're retired, Bill. I'm busting yeah. you down. Bill. Good, thing, good, thing I'm, good thing I'm not uh, yeah. doing it for, for, for real anymore. But somebody, then, somebody said run five miles in less than an hour without dying or embarrassing yourself. Okay, I can get on board with that. You oh, should be easy. able to do that. Yeah. There you go. Standard, I mean, what's, what's the threshold for embarrassing oneself? It's standard for five miles. Uh, is quitting. So. Quitting is a, the most yeah. embarrassing thing ever. Yeah. So, yeah, just keep going. I mean, fuck, you could, uh, you could power yeah, I mean, walk. Yeah, five miles really, in an hour. Yeah, yeah, probably. Like, what's average? Like, adult male walking pace is like three and three miles per hour. hour. Yeah, yeah, twenty minutes. So like, yeah. Twenty yeah, minutes. You could literally walk five miles an hour if you were striding it out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Shit, you. That's pace. That's ruck pace, man. That's twelve minute mile. Right yeah. There. yeah, yeah. That's that's rucking a uh, mile in under thirteen minutes. That's that's ruck pace, dude. Uh, let's see. Take hmm. a question. Yeah, let's take another question. Good, good, uh, good, good commentary on that. What's the fastest you've run under nods? Oof. 
as uh, fast as I fucking could. Yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, if I'm running under every it's... It's, 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 yeah, as fast as as fast as you can, I guess, without tripping and falling, uh, and then yeah, dying, there so. might be some tripping and falling oh, yeah. involved yeah. in that. So. Yeah, hey, somebody just asked, uh, what, "What's your dip, man? What are you dipping?" Uh, tonight is uh, Copenhagen Southern Blend because they were out of fucking long cut. Okay, so yeah, he's on the coat, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I need to quit. In fact, like a week ago, I was at Costco and bought like the giant. 40 pack of those like uh, nicotine lozenges because I was like I'm gonna give it another old college try for like the 18th <laughs> time in 20 years yeah and uh, yeah they're, 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 not, they're not even out of the package yet yeah so. I haven't even <laughs> but I took a step yeah I look at it every day I'll get to it later yeah all right let's do another giveaway and then we'll, we'll talk some more this is the last one of the this night, is our right? last giveaway of the night and then we're gonna get into some really really deep conversation all and right and break out the beers and break out the beers and you guys are more than welcome to join us uh we would love Crack to have a you cold one all right the finals the final giveaway pack is a weapon outfitter swag pack plus an ops core battery attach panel battery attach panel uh, and an ACS trigger mag pouch. That's a pretty sweet little, yeah. little giveaway kit. And you know what? I'll sweeten the deal. Check I'll sweeten the deal. I'll throw in. Uh, I'll throw in one of the special edition TNBC sticker, sticker pack V ones. Sweet. And those sticker packs, you will receive a current worn camo, a legacy camo. This one is chalky chipped, and then also a limited edition pattern. This is a bowling alley solo cup, 1980s uh, era, maybe early 90s. Trapper keeper. Uh, Bayside high, whatever you want to call it. Um, let's go with that. All right, cool. And what's the number? 38.95. 38.95. Come on down. Are we waiting? You want to do another question? Do yeah, let's do, do another it? question. Yeah. Let's do another question. Uh, well, Molly's usually I on guess. it. So, so somebody asked, I want to know what's in the background that everybody keeps staring at or looking at. There must be a lot of people there. There's truly not. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just Molly. <laughs> and yeah. when I say just Molly, I mean she does the job of 10 people. So thank you, Molly, from Basecamp Creative Group for making this all come to fruition and essentially being the person that knows how to press all these buttons to make us... She, she is really the one making this happen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And let's see. Uh, does the Wilcox sacrificial lens also work on the eyepiece? No. The thread pitch and pattern is not the same, is it? I mean, you know, there they're, they're dudes that will take the, like the light interference filters and, yeah. screw, them in, and screw them into the... the um, they pick out their ring adapters, rubber retainer ring. Come on, Molly. And, yeah. Thread so, so I on, think Molly. that you technically can. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would have to double check, but I think that those threads actually do match. But, I mean, why? Word. Like, I'll agree with that one. Why would you why? want to do that? Uh, yeah, yeah. One, you're just adding another thing that could get dirty or fog in between your eye and the lens that you need to see through. Um, if you're worried about that lens being scratched, uh, you better be a person that's around like helicopters a lot. And if you're not, then you shouldn't be worried about that lens getting scratched because yeah. there's not really anything that should be working its way in between your eye and that lens anyhow. Well, so. and the other thing is too, and I think that, I mean, at least they, they used to, I don't even know if they're still in the accessory packs, but, but demiss shields. So, I mean, and... And I used to use them too before I realized, you know, why they, you know, why they aren't a great idea. But there, there's the, those little plastic lenses that you stick on the that you stick on the back uh, of the device, and they're called demist shields. But really, all they end up doing is trapping humid air between your objective <laughs> lens right up against, yeah. or not your eyepiece lens right right up against it, and and so it doesn't demist shit. <laughs> 
it uh, they get scratched up super easily, and they just encourage fogging. And you can't wipe it off because it's on the inside. Yeah, yeah. We see it a lot in classes. Guys wearing, you know, additional lenses on their on their goggles, and uh, usually after about the second or third time we're back to the classroom, mm-hmm. they're popping them all out because they, you know yeah, they, it just it's just it's, the more lenses you're putting between you and what you're looking at is yeah. just more interference, Sheet, more trouble. Yeah more everything that that is just going to make it harder to see so yeah do you, do you guys sure. think that's a byproduct of people like just thinking that most of these modern day night vision systems are more delicate than they actually are because like coming from our background like I, i've seen some ratty ass 14s <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and 31 alphas that are fine. i think it's a gear like, thing you could I think it's a gear thing. yeah i mean I, I, I get it good. i get but, it because we yeah. because you know when we got issued the things and then so we have brought our experience having been issued them to it even as we do this you know outside of the outside of the service but you know if you don't have that experience or don't have that much of that of that experience i mean i guess you're you're dropping a pretty sizable amount yeah, of coin yeah, yeah oh, i get it yeah, yeah. so so i understand like I understand the, the compulsion to do that. I think it's a guy thing. Like it's like guys and gadgets and things, and you know, it's like, hey, if if you know, if it says protective lens on it, and should probably use it. I yeah. should, you know, I want I want to put it on there or you and, know, and, and and Velcro on your fuzzy Velcro on your case deflector. So, so you don't get any dings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, you know, I think I think don't there's the ding, ding. There, there's a little bit of that, you know, the you know, a combination of I want to protect my investment, and I want to, um, you know, put put more more widgets. Widgets are yeah. cool. And, yeah. And but be proud to have a set of nods that looks like you got dragged behind a truck for a couple kilometers. Because that means they're being they're used. Be, yeah, they're being used. They're being they're used. used. And they'll probably still work just fine. All right, the winner of uh, giveaway package six is RJP. 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 <laughs> uh, we'll send you an email. Um, congratulations. Yeah, nice. Man, we had a bunch of winners tonight, man. A bunch awesome. of winners tonight. So, yeah. And as, as, as Eric says in class, when we're doing the shoot-offs, he's like, we'll find some water and he'll be like all right everybody else go over there and dry up that mud puddle yeah if you're in the loser line then i'll find something random for you to do like uh lay down and dry up a mud puddle or something like that with your with your clothing (laughs) it's only fair it's only fair because you're wasting everyone else's time um all right so while we're cracking open these beers uh i want to tell a little story and it's a pretty funny story about uh night vision type stuff and it's somebody that people probably would recognize so a few years ago i was on a um a charity hunt a charity hog hunt and i won't disclose where and i won't disclose who else was there uh but i was one of the guides for this hunt um so essentially what it was is a pseudo industry event where there's a couple subject matter experts myself uh don edwards sam houston a couple of other people were there and you were all uh, given essentially um, a person that you're taking out to shoot a hog under knots, right? And it was pre- done pretty easily. We were all up in uh, a blind, all in elevated stands, and this stuff was all laid out and ready to go. It's about as easy as you can get it. And uh, I was the guide of Chris Cox. Chris Cox is the number two guy, or was the number two guy at NRA. Chris is a good dude. Chris, if you're watching or you hear this video, I love you, bro. I told you I was going to tell this story. Nothing's going to hold me back from this. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> we're hunting with, uh, you know, standard 5.56 five, rifles. I think there was a couple of 300 blacks. We're also pressured up and we got duels and everything like that. Anyway, we shimmy our way up into this stand. I think we're about a 20 foot stand. We're waiting for much of the night. Um, here comes a hog rolling in at about 200 yards. We see it. I spotted it on thermal first and then it comes trotting in so chris cox is a uh he's an avid hunter he's killed a lot of things um but he's never done anything under night vision at this point so this hog comes in at about 200 yards there was some banner about do i take the shot now i said no 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 no. wait till it gets much closer so it gets in at roughly uh i don't know let's say uh, a little bit closer than that this hog disappears right we don't see it anymore He's bummed. Oh, we missed our chance. No, no, no. We're good. Don't worry about it. The rest of the night, we got this. So, we're talking 
at a at a low whisper. Something that you probably shouldn't do if you want hogs to come in and eat <laughs> off the off the field that you're uh, that you're hunting. And this pig comes directly in under the stand from behind us. And as we're talking, I look down and I see this hog. He's basically just below us. And so I tell Chris, "Hey, the hog's right there. Take your shot." And so he he gets his rifle up and puts it out of the stand, and he's almost at like a straight down angle. We're about to shoot this thing. And it's taking some time, and I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the holdup is. And I'm like, P what are you doing? Pull the fucking trigger, Chris. And he's like, I'm trying. And I said, what do you mean you're trying? Pull the fucking trigger. And he says, I'm pulling it, but nothing's happening. And I'm saying, take it off the safety, right? He's like, it's off safety, right? So I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Number two of the NRA, right? So I'm like, give me the fucking rifle. So I grab his rifle. I feel through the dark. It was a failure to feed. So he short stroked it when he loaded his mag, right? Short stroked it. His shit's not loaded in all the way. So I pull the lock the bolt to the rear, clear the malfunction, put the magazine back in, fucking let the bolt ride home at risk of scaring and spooking this hog off, right? I hand him back the rifle. And he's like, is it good to go? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. It's good to go. So he raises his rifle up to go out of the blind again. And the edge of the blind is metal. And his suppressor hits it, a light, nice loud tink, hog runs away. So this dude, at this point, Chris is just so, so torn up about this. <laughs> He's like, fuck, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. I'm like, no worries, dude. To sweeten the deal, at the end of the night, a hog came rolling in. Um, he's, he's jittery at this point because he had just screwed up his first chance to get one. Probably the easiest shot you could have made, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, here comes this hog rolling in, and it gets about, I don't know, 50 yards from us. And uh, I'm like, put your eye or laser on it. He's like, where do I shoot it? I'm like, shoot it in the fucking eye. He's like, I can't see my laser. So I take my gun up. I put my laser on the hog's eye, and I'm like, put your laser on top of my laser. So he does. I turn my laser off. I'm like, shoot it. Shoot it now. Shoot it. He's like, right now. I'm like, shoot the fucking thing right now. <laughs> Shoots it. Thing sits down. Drops like a sack of potatoes. Good story, right? Long and the short, the motherfucking number two at the NRA. <laughs> I had to clear a malfunction on his AR-15 rifle under nods and hand it back to him. And uh, and there you have it. Know how to work your shit before you yeah. do it under nods. That's the importance of the, a good make-ready procedure. Right. Yeah, yeah. Load and make-ready. Yeah. Uh, yeah. make yeah. yeah. Stop make ready. short stroking your shit. Yep. Yep. So... Yeah. If he closes dust cover, he wouldn't. Chris, if you're yep. seeing this, man, I, I, I apologize. I hate to embarrass you like that, but bro, you should have known. You should have known better. <laughs> I'm sure he's you watching. Should have known better. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking a, man. Great time though. Had a great time. All right, let's uh, let's take another couple questions here, from people, and then we're gonna talk about some stuff. Oh, Eric, what do you spend more on annually? Annually, batteries or conditioner? Uh, that is, that is definitely conditioner <laughs> as crazy as that sounds. Uh, it's definitely conditioner. So conditioner is expensive. I mean, I don't know. It is what it is, man. You got to take care of yourself. You know, I would know. Oh, yeah. I would know this. Yeah. it takes a lot of work to look this shitty. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, if you weren't doing what you guys are doing now, what would you do for a living? What would be your dream job? Chris, what do you think, man? Holy shit, man. I didn't expect anything like that. Uh, I would actually like to get into, like, overland racing. Like, enduro like racing. Baja oh, shit? Yeah. yeah, but on motorcycles. Oh, okay. Like, adventure okay. riding and shit. Uh, oh. I did a little bit of it a couple of years ago. Uh, I haven't gotten back into it, and I really want to. But that'd be cool just to live that life. Like, yeah, man, I'm racing Dakar. We're doing this shit. I'm, oh, I'm riding yeah. around the world on my BMW. Like, I, I think you have to be like a trust fund baby to do that shit. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, there's no money in that. I don't know how to monetize that, but yeah. unless you're like Ewan McGregor and you can do shit like that. But <laughs> yeah. That's what I, I that's what I'd be doing. Into that stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think or you're sponsored folks. like crazy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you, Augie. So, uh, believe it or not, um, actually, before I came to TNVC, Don't I was... Don't say hentai, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, was, uh, was I was an English professor, um, and uh, that's, that's probably what I'd still be doing if I wasn't doing this. 
Um, That's your I, job? Fucking hell, you I mean, I, I, liked, I liked being an English professor. <laughs> well... Okay. Somebody's got to teach it. I mean, yeah. you're right. I, I mean, I'd rather not, have the guy yeah. teaching it that wants to teach it than, yeah. than somebody. I, right. I, I, I was, I was doing that. I was on that path. I thought that I had put my youngin' days behind me. Y'all, Vic asked me to come back into the fold, so I came back into the fold. Okay, that's admirable, man. That's admirable. <laughs> I also wanted to buy a house. English professors don't get paid very well. That's true. Well, <laughs> the problem is, is you weren't teaching at the right college. There's no college where English professors get paid well. <laughs> That's true. Well, yeah. Berkeley. Relative to relative to cost of living? Well, yeah. That's true. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. You should have been a better English professor. Yeah. Next, uh, who's next? Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. Uh, I would probably like to fly private jets for like someone that has a lot of money. Dude, like, I could totally see you doing that. Fly probably. jets all over the yeah, world. Yeah, with like the black pants and the white shirt. Yeah, yeah I could see him. You know? Like a look who's talking scenario, like you, but you're yeah. John Travolta in the movie. Yeah. Like you're the <laughs> pilot type exactly. dude. I know two CBP pilots that retired and now fly private Gulfstream jets for hmm. some rich families. And like the stories that I've heard are just so cool. Like they're kind of on call and get to fly all over the world and they're in charge of that jet for that family. And like... They go where the jet goes, and it's just, it seems like a pretty cool job. If those people are aggravating, you could be like, hey, we're going to get turbulence. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Billy? You know, I'll kind of parallel what, what uh, Thomas is saying, but, like, I think it'd be cool, like, again, if dream job, so I have the resources to do it, but to have, like, an old, like, B-25 or, like, F-4 Phantom or something and fly it, like, to, <laughs> like... old F-4 Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd like to, uh, I'd like to penetrate there was the one for airspace sale. and bomb yeah, yeah. a nuke and, uh, <laughs> There was one for sale a couple of years ago, but like, you know, fly it to air shows. Yeah, and, be, uh, uh, be, you be know, like, be an air, a, like an air show pilot. Yeah, yeah you know, barnstorming would be cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, but like, like you know. Like, like the great um, Santini. Yeah. What's it called? It, it, used to be, it used to be called the Confederate Air Force, but yeah, they, yeah, they had yeah. to change their but name. But like, yeah, you know, old, you know. Own a, a warbird and, and take it around and yeah and, and fly it. I think that'd be kind of a cool job because right now, man, you know, it's it's like you know I'm retired out of the army. I got this gig. I, man, that'd be kind of cool. Just to, yeah, it'd be pretty sweet to own like a Huey and yeah. like put speakers on the side and just roll around <laughs> blasting <laughs> playing fortunate blasting fortunate son. <laughs> 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 Throwing out ice cream to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was hard? The war yeah. was hard. You have like a tie-dye shirt on and a flight helmet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> joint. Yeah. Like smoking a joint, flying so a mind Huey. If, mind if I do a J? Uh, yeah. <laughs> how are you, Eric? That's perfect. Uh, I don't know, man. Probably something with music. I would like to do music professionally, but there's no money in that. Uh, but it should, it'd just be fun, man. Okay. I think some people make money. I mean, apparently, you're, apparently, you're not doing music <laughs> yeah. right. If you were a good enough musician, yeah. 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 Apparently, you, you, there's you, no money you play for music me in that. as good as he teaches. <laughs> yeah, so there's no money for me in that. You're right. You're right. I don't know music or something like that. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, skating. Maybe yeah. Maybe even uh, walking on water. Creating religious know. relics. Yeah, creating religious relics. Forging religious relics. <laughs> <Yeah>. Probably. <laughs> Hopefully. We're gonna Disney World or something. No, I don't know. I have so many interests. I, I don't know. A dream job would probably just be. I don't know, man. Probably, probably he's no getting, job. He's getting wistful now. A dream job would be uh, no job. My dream job. That, that it is pretty I nice know, to not work, but yeah. it takes a while to get used to it. And then yeah. once you get used to it, then it's. It's then they're like you get out of your rhythm, you know. You're like, no, I normally walk the dog at ten thirty in the morning. You know, I can't, I can't be. As, and the dog's like, you can't be deviating for that. I mean, it is. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fuck a job. Right now, I'm just trying to worry about uh, when I can retire. Uh, yeah. You know, folks my age, man. It's, I'm gonna fucking retire when I'm eighty five or something. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, what's your favorite book, Augie, since you're like an English professor guru? Ooh, favorite book? That's a good <laughs> question. I mean, it's, it's a tough question to ask. Um, uh, probably one of my favorite classic books is, uh, Roger Kipling's Kim. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if any of y'all have read that. It's Roger Kipling. It's, uh. Is it a movie? It's Kim. 
Kim. It's been. Is it a magazine? <laughs> no. So, so I mean, if, 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 if we're, are there a lot of pictures in it? If, if, if we're gonna go into that, it's about. Um, it's it, it's set it's set in colonial India, uh, so it's actually set in, in Pakistan, but it is called colonial Indi- uh, India at the time. About an Irish orphan, basically, who was raised by um, like local Indians, and he's essentially it's it's you know kind of a coming in a coming of age thing. He's trying to figure out who he is, whether he wants to be. Um, what, whether he wants to be the the, the white sahib, uh, and he gets recruited by the um, uh, British uh, secret services, um, but he also travels with uh, w- w- with a um, a, uh, a monk, uh, and and they travel. <laughs> you know, they travel, uh, <laughs> and they have a pet goat. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking, is this what Disney based the Jungle Book off of? No, yeah. it sounds like Jungle Disney Book. based the Jungle Book off <laughs> the Jungle Book. Yeah. Yeah. No, high, it's yeah. it's it, it's an older book, they turn of the century. Um, but but it's it's actually set in a lot of places that we're familiar with. Um, you know, and and it's 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 also one of those books that that kind of tells you how much how long. I mean, it's it's 1900, so it's not that long, but it but you know. 1900 how, words? Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> how long and how, you know, how long shit has been going on in that region and how much that, as much as things change, they stay the same. You know, it's still about, like, it's all played against the backdrop of, of some inter- international espionage about proxy wars. There's, like, Russian, German, and French agents that Kim is working against, uh, you, you know, under, uh, under Colonel Crichton, who's the British Secret Service's. Um, agent who who kind of recruited him. There's also some interesting. There's also some interesting yeah. stuff about the fact that that Kim is Irish. I hope uh, somebody watching this has to do like a book report yeah. on this yeah. book, and they're like, yeah. "Fucking okay, Jack so I yeah. told so you guess what? You don't have to read this book. You don't have to read this book. You just know it. Yeah. Now. I told you it was the wrong question to ask. Okay, okay, Chris. In, in, in 15 seconds or less, favorite book? Uh, Fierce Invalids, Home from Hot Climates. By Tom Robbins. Favorite book? I read Consumer Reports, man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite book, Eric? Uh, yeah, no, I don't do books, bro. I, <laughs> I can't. Uh, I don't do words. So. I'll go with uh, Red Storm Rising, Tom Clancy. Not no remorse. That's usually like without every, remorse. Is pretty good, but remorse, uh, yeah. But Red Storm Rising, read it about every two or three years. Good book. Woo. Man, that was that hurt, Augie. That was a yeah. shitty question. I mean, I just told you I used to be an English question. professor. Then you asked me to question. talk about books. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, um, yeah, so obscure ballistic helmets are probably far better than Team Wendy x goals for a lot of reasons. I'll give them my top reasons why they're better. Uh, that was asked uh, That was asked in the comments. Um, one is uh, just general comfort of the system itself. The um, Octile or the Warm Dial liners are both more comfortable to me than the Boas. Two would be the rails. Um, Every other helmet company out there on the market just basically took, uh, I would say, I don't wanna say ripped off Opscore because I don't know if that's the case, but they basically Unlicensed replicas. Yeah, they, they, they just tried to do rails, but just weren't able to do it in a correct way. And the ones that do have similar obstacle rails, they're either unlicensed copies or they do have the license for the design, like the airframe. Those are uh, those are licensed by obstacle, I do believe. Uh, they are. Yeah, they are. They have the logo stamp they on them, so they're good to go. Um, those are my two main reasons, but also the weight, um, like physical weight, not lead time. Um, and then they just look the best, in my opinion. They are aesthetically pleasing to me. <laughs> Anybody have anything to add to that? 
So, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of riff on what you, off of what you were saying in terms of the BOA versus the, uh, the Fitband liner in, in the Opscar helmets. So, so if you... 20 seconds or less. Look at the way the, the <laughs> BOA is designed. I mean, it's basically like a thin metal wire with, with like a felt boot around it. And that BOA system was actually, it was designed to tighten snowboard boot laces. And so it's, desi it's not designed to stabilize something on your head. Whereas the semi-rigid fit band within the, the ops core helmet, you know, if you just look at the geometry of it and this, the amount of surface area and the fact that it's purpose designed to keep a helmet stable on your head. You're not basically repurposing shoelaces uh, to, to, to keep your helmet on your head. So it just offers a whole lot more Five stability seconds. and comfort. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're right. Uh, <laughs> the Octile and the Worm Dollar are superior design. Yeah. Um, yep. What is your preference? Um, white phosphor or green phosphor and why? I'm going to go white phosphor. I've used a lot of green phosphor. Um, I like white better. I think I can see a little bit better and more definitive, especially with the tubes, obviously because they're unfilmed. Um, so they offer that clarity, that additional clarity and higher spec on average. And then to, um, I like the fact that my eyes don't turn. My natural eyesight doesn't become purple like when you're under green or pink when you're under green for a really long time when you come out of the um, the white phosphor tubes. That's that's me. Yeah, white white phosphor. Um, I used to run red filters on my white phosphor 31s just to kill some white light bloom and it kind of gave it a pink tinge, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I liked them a lot more. <laughs> Seemed like I could wear them longer without the fatigue of the green. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a reason for that or it's just my fucked up brain, but <laughs> probably the brain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, white generally outperforms green, but I'll also tell you that I teach with a green fourteen and and I do that because that's what I have, but also uh like we've talked about before is uh to demonstrate to to students to show up to class that you know you're not under equipped with a uh, with a green PBS 14. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you Thomas? I mean, I filmed a lot of vehicles and things under green and white, and the white is definitely better in much darker situations. Yeah. Yeah. What I found for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it comes out better too on camera, I think yeah. as well. Are you all? Uh, do I have? Permission to discuss. Well, you know, <laughs> there, there, there are there are some viewers that might be getting a little sleepy. In August, so go ahead terms. and, and knock yeah, them out. Farm or LPI so, or so, so, so I I, I prefer uh, white phosphor. Um, there are actually a lot of good reasons. There are a lot of good reasons for the um, reduced fatigue mm -hmm. wearing them. There's a lot of good technical and scientific reasons. Uh, having to do with just the fact that it's more naturalistic it's more similar to your daylight vision so you think about like when they made before they had color te televisions they made black and white televisions they didn't make you know green and gray televisions they didn't make red televisions you know they made black and white televisions because that's the more natural image um White generally tends to be perceived as brighter by the user, and that's probably why you know y'all are saying that that you feel that they they work better under low light conditions because because you you see white when you see white, you think that a white light is brighter even if it's at the same intensity level, offers increased contrast, uh, and and that increased contrast offers you you know more sensitivity to movement, which. When we discuss camouflage and stuff like that, you know, we were talking about that 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 is really the important component. There is the ability to see movement. Um, the theory behind green, you know, green screens that that was really it's 30s, 40s uh, logic was that the human eye can see more different shades of green, and you know, there's there's some evolutionary theories as to why that is. Um, you know, to tell the difference between vegetation and stuff like that, and so they ran with that. And so green is what you know people have used for for, for many many years, mm -hmm. uh, but but pretty much you know all of the in the field feedback from from professional end users uh, at least under the age of uh, under the age of like forty um, is is very strong preference for white and reduced fatigue. 
Do you think it'll get to a point where, like, they just don't make green foss tubes anymore? I mean, in a lot of situations, that's kind of already happening. So, like, like the the BMVDs, the PBS thirty one, uh, the PBS thirty ones. You can, if you really wanted to, you can special order those with green tubes. But I, I mean, I haven't asked L three what their numbers on green PBS thirty ones is. But oh, I, weird. it's it's yeah. like next to nil. Mm. I think something to consider too is that you know a higher, a higher performing green tube will, will be much better than a lower performing white tube. Yeah, yeah. you know, so tube yeah. quality kind of wears into it too. And I get just to let you know, I got a text from my sister, who said that her, that she was having a hard time getting her kid to sleep. <laughs> your lecture on uh, Kim dissertation um, Kim. actually put the put the baby to sleep. So. Uh, she's very appreciative. Well, I gotta try that at home. So, <laughs> yeah. So you didn't answer the question though. Audrey. What is your favorite? Green or I white did. Phosphor? That was the very first thing that I said. I prefer white phosphor. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I'm just making sure. I said I prefer white phosphor. Here are some reasons. Gotcha. Uh, Opscore Amp Ear Pro, go or no? It's a go. go. Uh, everything that Opscore makes is fantastic. Solid go. Uh, yeah. Leading in an innovation period in anything that they make. Um, the amps are really good quality. The sound is phenomenal, and they also have some perks. You know, the amps can be swapped out for their the arms that they sell, and vice versa. So, if you want a two-in-one sort of uh, thing without having to buy two separate comms, one for your helmet, one for your head, uh, go with the amps and get the, the arms. But and the, if you, I mean, if you want it to be just ear pro, you can do that. If you want to. If you need communication capability, you can add it right in. Yeah, I, mean, I think somebody yeah. said it last night. The yeah. fa my favorite thing about uh, the amps is that you can remove the download Down cable. Lead. Yeah, and move the yeah. um, microphone from the left microphone to right. Left to right. And, yeah, yeah. Remove it, period. Yep. Yep. Um, any significant differences in amplified ambient sound? I would say yes, but also more noticeably when you have the NFMI, NFMI earbuds in as well. So it like enhances everything because one, you're talking about um, old school Sony, uh, this is an analogy, um, old school Sony Walkman, you know, things versus in the ear. So anytime you have um, a, uh, a hearing source closer to where you actually hear things, you're gonna get a little bit better sound out of it. Um, so the NFMI inserts, or worth the upgrade as well if you buy an amp. Yep. What is Augie's IQ? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Moving on. What is the most complicated task you've had to accomplish under stress, under NV? Well, yeah. That's, a, uh, yeah, that's, that's an a... obvious one. Um, <laughs> I'll let you go first, Chris. Uh, I think you talked about it last night, didn't you? No, that's not the, that was rote training skill, but like the uh. most complicated task for sure is definitely a couple of, of, uh, like gate breaches, you know, where you got to go up there and figure out like, what the fuck am I looking at? You know, it's like, Hey, I got bars going this way and I got fucking shit down here and I got that and like, all right, shit. And then is that metal, is that wood, is yada, yada. And then trying to construct some schmishmorshin of fucking breaching charges that you have on you to like attack all these things at once and it's just a bitch you yep. know, it takes a while and you got some fucking leadership like are you done yet yeah you're like What's hey your ETA I, I can fuck this up in five <laughs> seconds if you want me to yeah. or you can give me 60 seconds to make sure it's right yeah. you know <laughs> Seriously, fucking always in the ear yep what about you uh bill uh working with airplanes I mean, you know, stuff that we do in the daytime, yep. target location, all that stuff. You, everything changes at night. You, it, some parts are easier, you know, like you, using tools to illuminate and, and mark targets. But some parts of it, you know, even like the old traditional stuff, like now with, you know, sensor pods and, and you know, handheld computers, it gets a little bit easier. But like traditional work with airplanes under MVGs especially in a high stress environment mm -hmm. uh, can get real challenging very quickly. Yeah, I think um, doing like a, a blood sweep or an injury sweep under nods is probably the most complicated and stressful thing to do under nods when you can't use white light, uh, period. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, a lot going on there, and it's important to find all that stuff pretty quickly. Augie? I mean, I guess uh, running a company attack. Yeah. Yeah. This is pretty, pretty fucking complicated and stressful under nods. Driving with a uh, PVS 14 over like 40 miles an hour is scary too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't have any, you, you're just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, your deaf reception's not there and like trees just come out of nowhere that like you thought weren't you're like, there. Ah! Yeah. And uh, yeah. You know, but we're, you know, we're spoiled with dual tubes, but we got to remember, I mean, oh, I got you know, like in the 2000s, yeah, with 14s, yeah. it yeah. can be done. Yeah, yeah. Motherfuckers are flipping yeah. Humvees left and right, though. So. Yeah, I got a, I got the arms to show, show it that you can, <laughs> that you can, uh, you can roll Humvees and, uh, um, you know, with MVGs on. But at the same time, I mean, we were just having that conversation today with a friend of mine that, yeah, you can drive with a 14, yeah. and, and, and we did it for years, I mean, decades. Yeah. So uh, um, we're spoiled now at Gog. But, but 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 that did lead to the development of the uh, the TNVC powered bridge mount and non powered bridge mount. The the, the primary kind of impetus behind those was was for conventional forces to be able to to take uh, PVS 14s and and have some sort of binocular capability. And and the big one of the big reasons for that was increased safety yeah. um, for for uh, wheeled vehicle drivers. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so let's do something a little bit more fun, change up the pace. Let's play a game called Two Truths and a Lie. All right, so I'm sure all you guys know what Two Truths and a Lie is. We're each going to say three things about ourselves, two of them being true, one of them being a lie, and then we'll all try to guess the lie. But it should provide for some good comedic entertainment and certainly <laughs> give us plenty of ammo for shit-talking, um, which is what everyone truly <laughs> wants. About. All right, so That's I'm why a, you're tuned in. Let's kick it off with Thomas. Thomas, what you got, bro? All right, I'm gonna list <laughs> off my three first potential jobs in life, and you guys can guess which one. Which okay. One. All right. Uh, pressure washing gas stations in the middle of the night. Walmart greeter. And I set up Barney bouncy houses, as well. Oh Jesus. I'm going to go with Barney Bouncy Houses is the lie, because by the time you were old enough to do that, Barney was long gone, bro. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Walmart Greeter, because it, it, it sounds, it, it, it sounds specific, yeah, it's yeah. suspiciously specific. blase. I'm going to agree with Augie. Walmart Greeter? Yeah, fucking yeah. Walmart Yeah, Augie's right. Oh, yeah. Shit. yeah. Plus, yeah. the Walmart greeters are always like old fucks. Like, yeah, that's like true. generally <laughs> yeah. look yeah, yeah, jolly. Yeah, I don't like, think they'd hire a seventeen-year-old kid. No, nah, <laughs> they'd be like, like oh, yes, kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good day to you, sir. Fuck up. <laughs> Get out my face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They'd be like, you got a strong back, boy. You got your ass set back, right? Entrepreneur life. That's right, man. That's right. Uh, okay, I'll go. I'll go next. Right. <laughs> Um, I was disciplined at a job for farting in front of a co-worker. Uh, my patrol car was stolen by a female I arrested. And I was 12 pounds when I was born. <laughs> I think the 12 pound thing is a lie. The rest of them are pretty plausible for yeah, you. I'm, I'm, have to go. I, I, I'm with Chris. Yeah. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, 12 pounds is a big fucking baby, man. Yeah. And you're a little guy. Tw mm. 12 pounds. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll just go with the, the whole the whole crowd. That's true. I was 12 pounds when I was born. Damn. Ooh, Jesus Christ, man. You're poor mama. Yeah, Ooh. I was 12 pounds when I was born. The lie there is my patrol car was stolen by a female I arrested. Oh. She attempted to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> I got in a tussle with her, and I tased her right in the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Normally you have to pay extra. For that. <laughs> yep. So paramedics roll up. Yeah. They're like, "What's wrong with her?" I'm like, "Just look at it." And they're like, "Oh no, we're not pulling those probes out. She's got to go to the hospital." <laughs> Understandable. Understandable. Take her in the back door of the hospital. She immediately screams, "He tased me in the pussy!" <laughs> Everybody turns around and looks. And I just said, I didn't mean to, because I didn't. <laughs> so, yeah, um, 
<laughs> no, my car wasn't stolen. Dude. It nice. was almost, though. Seemed like a good idea at the time. But I was yeah. definitely disciplined at a job for farting in front of a coworker. Yeah, that sounded very, very plausible. At Team yeah. BC? <laughs> 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 no. Yeah, their last night partner class. <laughs> I was like, God damn it, Eric. Yeah. How many fucking times do we have to tell you? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, that's me. Pretty good. All right, I'll go. Wrote these down. So, uh, I used to have six fingers on my left hand. Uh, Chris Sizelove is, is not actually my legal name. Or, I once used a dead possum as an assistant gunner during an entire platoon LFX. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going for the lie out of those three? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Damn, this is hard. <laughs> How about D, all of the above? No. <laughs> I know you used to have six fingers because you told me that story. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I th- shit. I think the lie is the dead possum for sure. Okay. It sounds like something you would do, but I don't think you did it. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go Chris Sizelove. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go go with Bill because I feel like like there's definitely a ranger story behind. Yeah, the, the dead possum. possum. Yeah, I mean, completely <laughs> plausible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go with the name. You, you're right. My na- my legal name is Chris Sizelove. So the the other two. Uh, I'm sorry. Wait. What Wait. Is it? <laughs> like that one's the lie. My name is Chris Sizelove. <laughs> the other two are absolutely true. I was born with six fingers in my left hand, and I did find a dead possum once. And we were down a man on the gun team, and I was like, I'm fucked. <laughs> this guy's it. And of course, like my squad leader was like, "You're fucked up," you know. I was like, "Whatever." <laughs> Went through the whole thing, just giving him gun commands, dragging him with me, displacing the gun and shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the best <laughs> yeah. you ever had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> found it on the range, and dude's like, you know, rangers love dead animals. He's like, "Fuck yeah." <laughs> <laughs> you need to get that embroider on something yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah. Rangers love dead animals. <laughs> 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 Sat down next to the machine gun and shit. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Uh, so, I've got questions about the the, uh, the the extra finger. What did they say at MEPS? You had to disclose all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they just cut it off. It's no big deal. I still have like a little nub, but it had a bone in it and shit. But they cut it off when I was really young, so like now it's up here. But it used to be down there. Yeah. So, it was like, yeah. Cool. Mutant. Damn. I wish they would let me keep the motherfucker. That'd be sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> gives me gives me extra recoil control. Yeah. Extra precision. Augie. Augie. So this one's gonna be I, so I also wrote them down. Good. I know it's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. These are So uh, I can't wait. <laughs> I, I I once unknowingly and accidentally hooked up with uh, one of the Man. CGs <laughs> of HRC's engaged daughter. Uh, I once tested positive for HIV, or I once accidentally hooked up with my brigade sergeant major's daughter. Woo! Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> so I'm assuming one so of those. How do you accidentally hook up with any chick? No, I just unknowing, <laughs> Un- unknowing, without knowing. I thought, knowing I that thought it was a man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unknowingly <laughs> having only it was found accidentally out. Accidentally, a girl. Oh no. What the those, fuck? Those katoys are legit. All right. Uh, <laughs> it's like the opposite of the crying game, you know? The the, uh, the lies, the unknowingly. Of <laughs> <laughs> we all know you ain't hooking up with no goddamn body, bro. <laughs> uh, Just kidding, bro. I think that's the one. That's the lie. But there's two of them. Yes. Two truths and a lie. Sergeant. Yeah, so one of the CG, Oh, oh Major. yeah, the, C, the CG, yeah. I'm going to start major. I'm going to go start major, too. That was the lie. I never hooked up I, I never hooked up with a brigade sergeant major's daughter. <laughs> so you did pop hot for Well, color me surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. Yes, I and 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 this is this is a story for for when uh, for for when shot show actually resumes. 
Uh, but yes, I did once test positive for HIV. It was a <laughs> false positive. Yeah. No, he claims it was a false positive and refused to get a second test. Yeah. No, no, I told I no, no, no. I had the the fucking infectious, Chris, the head of the infectious like. diseases department <laughs> tried to come in and tell me that if it'll make you happy, we'll test you again. I was like, motherfucking right, you're gonna test me again. If it'll make you happy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it will. It'll make I don't me think not it's like super myself, uncommon. I, I had a dude in my platoon in the army that had the same thing in college. He like went to his shitty college, like. Yeah, aid station, and they're like, "Yeah, bro, you have HIV," and he like just tried to kill himself for five days drinking until finally somebody like dragged him out of there. Like, let's go get tested let's, again. Let's, let's double check, <laughs> yeah. guys. Oh, they were like, "Oh, we thought you wanted hearing aid." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, thanks. I just tried to kill myself. Yep. Fuck. <laughs> Actually, so 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 the other thing that they told me when when they were giving me the news. And they found out that I was a firearms owner. They were like, so it's very important that you not jump to conclusions about how this happened. You know, try not to be angry. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're in the fucking military. Of course you have access to firearms. <laughs> yeah. no, I, Damn, I, dude. I got a what a fucking wild one. story. And I've heard the in-depth wild story. It's it is hilarious. fucking wild. <laughs> it's hilarious. It is wild, bro. It involves a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> like a fucking... Restraining order. <laughs> Five-pound bag of ice. <laughs> a fucking dumpster. Stolen dumpster. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. You ever... Uh, so we were at the store earlier. Do you ever run of those people that don't fucking return their shopping carts? Yeah. I mean, like personally, like have a conversation. No, like does that guy, does that bother you guys? Like it bothers me. Yeah, it bothers me, man. Kind of. Like, I don't it's know. Like, I mean, like, it annoys me, but I don't dwell. Some on parking it. lots though aren't you set don't return up for shopping good, carts. Like, I do lot. return shopping Returns. carts. Okay. Yeah. I return yeah. shopping carts. You don't I don't dwell on carts. it. Well, when? only at Costco when they like they don't have any cart returns in the back forty. See? So you just <laughs> but I hook it. I hook it on, on the, the curb. curb. So it doesn't roll. And like, okay. Because, A, they pay people to go out and get them. So I would be taking away somebody's job if I walked that bitch he's, 150 he's yards. He's supporting American blue collar workers. <laughs> yeah. That's some boomer sound. Yeah. 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 It's like in the grocery store when my wife's like, I don't, we don't, we want, we don't want this. Go take this back. And I'm like, just put it back on the. Put it back on the shelf. Like they pay people to come it's around. It's like being here. like, sir, what? Chris fucking... Size Love, Ranger, Patriot, Job Creator. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like just shitting on the floor in the middle of Walmart and being like, well, they got a fucking janitor. They, <laughs> they pay someone. Hey, this is my job. Employed. <laughs> my fucking job. No, I return my carts. Yeah, I return my carts. Uh, because I like to run and then jump on them and ride them like a fucking <laughs> smash them into yeah. his cars, <laughs> flip them over, <laughs> launch them into the fucking retention ponds, whatever. Somebody's got a big old ding in their '90s <laughs> brand new freaking Z06 Corvette, and you're like, "But I had to return the cart, so. sir. I will stop yeah. at nothing the to important return this thing cart. Is the cart that's, back in the. In that, the <laughs> that's when Eric leaves leaves the the note that says, "I had to pretend like I was leaving my information because everyone was watching." <laughs> <laughs> no, what I do is I carry around a stack of Sam Houston's business cards, <laughs> and I just write on them, sorry I hit your car. <laughs> uh, Bill, you didn't do two truths and a lie, man. Oh, okay. Don't try to fucking scam out of it. <laughs> you weren't going to say shit either. Maybe that's my first statement. No. Okay, so uh, let's see. Two truths and a lie. Gotta think about this for a second. No, the fuck you don't. You had all the time in the <laughs> yeah, world yeah, to think like, about. I like it, typing my shit out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I didn't write it down. So, um, the only airplane I've flown has been F 16. Um, That's the fucking lie right there. The, I've never smoked a cigarette. That's. That's and uh, I have an Army Commendation Medal for having a personal role in the complete destruction of 13 Iraqi divisions and the liberation of northern Iraq. Those are all lies. Those are all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Army competition. laughs> Oof. I don't. I don't think Bill smoked a cigarette. I don't That's think so either, man. That, You're that, too straight laced. Right, yeah. I could. Bro, I you could won't even see. Smell a beer. I could see him getting stuck in, in in like a 16D and be told to 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 take over the stick. So I can see that one. 
I can see the other one. It's way too specific to be to come up with as a lie. I and and I and and I probably would have guessed that you know, that Bill's never smoked a cigarette. Bill's too straight laced. He definitely ain't never smoked no cigarette, bro. Yeah, cigarette for yeah, sure. Yeah, cigarette. <laughs> too healthy. <laughs> but I do have a, I do have an Arcom for a complete yeah, destruction of thirteen racket divisions. I don't doubt that. Yeah. You should smoke a cigarette tonight. <laughs> <laughs> if Augie keeps, if Augie keeps on talking. <laughs> I need to light a cigarette in here because it smells like dog shit. Fucking <laughs> 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 like, like hell, bro. Fucking <laughs> like hell, bro. Let's take a question, man. Let's see what they're saying. Uh, let's do... Uh, whew, okay. Future of NV. Um, what do we think it's going to be like? Digital. Do we think it'll be digital I, or we, augmented? I we, or have or a I whole, we have a whole... De- night devoted to that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna yeah. Be digital. Somebody said, uh, aside from beer, uh, what does everyone usually drink, like on a daily basis? Like aside from beer, um, I like Topo Chico a lot. Uh, that's that's my go-to. I probably drink like two cases a week of Topo Chico. So Trader Joe's has this this watermelon cucumber punch. That's that's. Uh, uh, seasonal only, and and I buy like three cases of it to last me until the next time that it comes back out. Nice. Dude, you drink Monster, man. Yeah. You drink fucking yeah, Monster. Yeah, more yeah. Monster than Wait, we're not doing two yeah. truths in the line anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Augie, you drink Monster. He wakes bro. up and he's like, lights a cigarette, and, <laughs> and before he even gets no. out of bed, right? he fucking drinks. He fucking drinks a cigarette and lights a Monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking just. Free bases the fucking can of monster. <laughs> yeah. That's probably one of the few things I do well is I pretty much I drink black coffee in the morning, like two cups out of the press. Because if I don't do that, I'll just keep drinking it all day. So I'm like, that's it. <laughs> that's and funny. then uh, just water, man, and, and beer. But because like years ago, I was that dude that would drink like like three or four 24 ounce monsters in a day you oh, know? God, yeah and it's just man. like after like a couple of years i'm like i feel like man, my heart feels all weird. the time yeah. Yeah. my heart feels weird. my heart's got a constant <laughs> flutter yeah i just cut that shit my out my fucking like, eyelid is twitching and yeah. won't stop yep so it's like just water and just black coffee and man, all shake it all the red. time the monsters <laughs> yeah monsters will fuck up your shit oh too, yeah rippets all those rippets over oh, oh my god I gotta cut all that shit out you know yeah. i still do i mean rippets is what rippets is what got me on that train but uh, you ever had a jacked 3D? 14. I had to take, yes. I had to take a kid to the hospital once over okay. a fucking jacked 3D. Similar story, bro. I did yeah. a two scooper my first time on jack 3D. No, no, no. You're t- you're talking. About, I'm saying jacked 3D. So, is it the drink or is it the pre-workout? Okay, so it's when you take about two ounces of fucking Jack Daniels and put a scoop of fucking jack 3D in it. Oh, that's gee, a jack no. 3D. Yeah, no. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> no. like, fucking privates will do anything stupid. What did they do to get his heart rate down? Did I don't know. know. They, we took him to the ER, bro. <laughs> yeah, not our problem anymore. <laughs> Magic happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's just ride that light, yeah, boy. It's like a four loco from hell. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> no, I did. A, I did a, a, a double scoop of Jack 3D, the powder. Yeah, yeah. And dude, I was in the middle of a, of a workout, and I was like, fuck. I was like <laughs> yeah. seeing the constellations and shit. My third eye was opening. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Fuck. I, was, I was crowning. Yeah. I just sat down, and like that was a workout enough, just yeah. trying not to die. A couple, couple years ago at SHOT Show, someone was handing out the like high-power five-hour energies, like the oh, HP yeah. version. Oh, my yeah. God, and, was, dude. And, and it's how I like just... You know, threw one down, and like 20 minutes later, I was just feeling like super flush. My arms were tingling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like seeing stars. Like, I had to go back to my hotel room, just like lay there, like, like, like handle milk your up, shit. Milk <laughs> <laughs> like, flush my system. Oh, that's the last sure. time I ever even touched. Oh, man, I'm that pretty was scary. sure they slipped you a roofie, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got, they made a movie about that. Man. I got roofie. He's like on the shot. roof. Like, of, of the hotel. Did? I've heard so many stories about. I'm so glad I was drink. like squared, uh, like not squared away. That's the wrong word, but like, it was right after I got done walking the floor, and it was the classic like, "Hey, we're gonna go to this place and get you know some drinks. We'll pregame it. We're gonna go leatherneck." So I knew I was good, right? And I was like, "I'm a pretty good drinker." So the f- number one beer, 
maybe a third of the way, to, like just past the neck, oh. and all of a sudden, poof, shit goes sideways, Go and on. I was like, oh fuck, like something's happening here, <laughs> I'm not cool with it, so I'm running, I like literally ran back to the room and just locked myself in, yeah. and I, I took the ride for like 10 hours, I was like, holy shit. Oh, you shit. took the ride? I, I don't know what the How fuck. How was he? Uh, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking shut the ride. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Vegas, man? baby. So, <laughs> somebody fucking think this beer was going to somebody else or what? I have no idea. But Dude. I'm glad I like had the presence of mind to like get the fuck out of there. Bill Quick. drinks warm Pepsis. Yeah. Ooh, rodeo Pepsis. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, bro. <laughs> that shit would get you fucked up too, man. <laughs> warm Pepsi, bro. <laughs> That shit's bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, fucking uh, hot rail of fucking gummy worm and drink two fucking go. warm Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> you like drink it out of the fucking Swizzler stick and shit. Like, like the straw that they do with twirls a little bit. He's got a fucking Twizzler as a straw. <laughs> Drinking a hot Pepsi. This is delicious. Hey, <laughs> Um, guys, if we cut out, it's because uh, we're going to take a quick break for swapping batteries, so feed cuts. Just, How many people we got right now, Just Molly? stand by. Like 12. What's that? Like 100. Uh-huh. Oh. So if, okay. we, if we cut out, it's just temporarily. we got to swap, uh, swap out batteries we'll or something right like now. that. Hmm? We'll do it right now. Do it now. Okay, yeah, we're going to yeah, go ahead and do that. Let's take a quick break. Stand by. Um, we'll Augie's right got to clean his shoes. We'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. Augie's <laughs> Spray bleach on the dog shit that is on the rug. So, <laughs> folks, don't do that. It's gonna ruin the fucking rug more so than the dog shit did. Oh my gosh. Oh Jesus. Whew. Yeah, I've heard so many stories about guys uh, getting the wrong drink at Shot Show, dude, or the right drink, but someone put the wrong, someone put the shit in the wrong drink. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a professional roofier, so I don't know what their <laughs> tactics are. But I'm like, not a professional, like they fucked up. <laughs> are you sure? You seem like it, man. You got that extra long reach behind the back. He's got that sixth finger. He's like <laughs> <laughs> fucking instead of Salt Bay, you're the fucking roofie Bay. You just sprinkle that shit off your arm. Hits a drink, fizzles over. Yeah, oh, damn. Man. I'm so glad we're not in Vegas right now. This is so much better. Chris, Fuck. you have a serious fan club. You should like. What? Say, you have a real big fan club. I do. Lots yeah. of dudes. Lots, lots of, dudes, of guys. Lots of yeah. dudes like Chris. A lot of guys. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's a handsome fella. Well, they heard that roofie story. They thought they had. The, like, they had. They had a chance. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking zipper. Hello. Zipper. To all of you oh. out there. No idea. Cool. <laughs> Those pants, man. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> Go back fucking... to the bathroom with a zipper down. One shoe. He's like... One shoe, Aggie. <laughs> one shoe, Aggie. <laughs> <like, "Look> yeah. <laughs> Stumbling around. <laughs> He's like, thump. Somebody said, uh, why aren't the chicks on camera? Um, well, there's there's only one, and it's Molly. And it's because she's making sure uh, everything is steady Working. running. She's, she's keeping behind us Behind the going. scenes. There's a lot of... As you can imagine, there's a lot of high-tech machinery in this general area. That's why we're over here and not with that expensive stuff. Uh, Molly's supposed to behind the scenes, like your view. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do this. I'll post if if you guys have um, a um, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Go to the uh, TMC Instagram. I'll do a quick story <clears throat> of what we see behind the scenes right now. Uh, yeah, something. 
Something kind of fun. Something kind of fun people were interested in. <laughs> Something kind of fun. Something kind of fun. Yeah, you know. Something kind of fun. Yeah, <laughs> see? Something kind of fun, see? Adult supervision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she keeps us straight. Keeps us out of trouble. And here is <laughs> the le dog shit. <laughs> the yeah. dog shit. <laughs> hey. Like literally a trail of it. That is, that is pretty good. So... All right, that's up. Uh, that's up on our stories right now. So if you guys want to see what it looks like behind the scenes here, uh, it's just a bunch of lights, uh, a camera, and some really expensive equipment. Yep. Um, Did you see anything in it? Yeah. yeah. Like in the camera? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see everything. Molly was back there waving yeah. and all kinds of shit. I'm sure it was like with lights. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, uh, uh, hey, 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 I got a text from a buddy of mine who's watching. He said uh, we should do a giveaway from. From uh, from in the chat, should do a giveaway from in the chat. Oh, inside of the chat. Yeah. How oh, we, we really can't track. How we don't know work? who's. who's uh, there. Yeah. I tell you what. Why don't we um, do a sticker pack for people who are watching right now? Yeah. I'll tell you what. Um, we'll uh, we'll do a sticker pack giveaway for. How how, how can we do it though? Like, we'll just get yeah. Molly to randomly what, find what, someone. What are the mechanics in of this? The chat? Yeah, just say something like fifth. The fifteenth person down from the last person that wrote "fuck" in their comments, or something like that, like something, something yeah, yeah, like yeah. rando. Everybody write "fuck." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the fourth person to write like green or like you know, I don't know, something like that. Well, they'll, they'll, well, they'll game it. They'll game it. How about this? The well, funniest also person. Also, the website and Facebook. There are two channels. Uh, the funniest okay. person to tell me. <laughs> Is everybody just bothered? That was just an idea. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> just pick a rando one, Molly. Just, just pick a rando one. Close your eyes down. and just point at one of the... At one of the... And people are writing green, sorry. Green also. Green? Green <laughs> fucked, though. <laughs> Molly, just pick three randomly from the chat at any at any point and now. Have they email in or something? And yeah. yeah, just DM us or send us a message. Yeah, yeah. Um, with your, uh, you know, all that shit. Yeah. No, actually, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll pick somebody from the chat. Definitely Morales. He's said fuck like twenty times. Okay, so <laughs> so Morales. Morales he's motivated. Yeah. Morales DM us. Uh, you got to have the same name you're DMing us from or whatever if you're on Facebook. Oh my, oh my god. Jeremy has been like shouting out Chris all night and he really wants to win. So Jeremy. Okay. Yeah, Jeremy okay. DM uh, us. Jeremy. Jeremy DM us. And then a Jake Thomas on Facebook. Jake go, Thomas Jake. on Facebook. Jake yeah. DM us. Good idea, Curtis. That is awesome. Curtis yep. is good. Curtis, good friend of mine, he bought an XLS2 bus. To so those night. three that we just yeah, picked, yeah. Oh, yeah. To those three we just picked, DM us, and we will oh, we're, uh, throw you some sticker packs in the mail. We, Curtis and uh, Curtis and his wife are going to come to our Nightfighter class up in Montana. So nice. I'm good. looking forward to that class. That's going to be, dude, that's going to be so much fun. We're going to be running. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking forward to the class, but I'm looking forward to the road trip out there and oh, the yeah, road it's, trip back. Yeah, it's going to be gonna awesome. Be. But we're going to run uh, Nightfighter 101. And our professional at the same time, same weekend up in Great Falls, Montana. 30, 33 plus night fighters we were tearing marching. ass. I am. I, I refuse to fly. I just flew home. No, or I, I went to go see my parents over Christmas. And like, my goal in 2021 is to not fucking fly again. It was terrible, <laughs> dude. It's yeah. like they're training people to get into boxcars. Like, there's no more dignity, nothing, especially flying with guns and kit and all that shit i'm like you know what i'm gonna be a hertz platinum member i'm just getting a tahoe and loading it up with my shit and driving across the u.s there's something there's something really nice about uh cross-country drives yeah road trips are fun like yeah that. road yeah. trips yeah. are really yeah. fun especially if but you have someone with you doing them solo fuck that yeah i've done that a couple times road yeah. tripping with a good set of people um that that's that's i did stuff. i did i you know, people, a lot of people know about my road trip from uh, Montana to Alliance to the shoot house class in a, in a 2002 four-door Tacoma, man. Four dudes. <laughs> man, that's a long motherfucking drive, dude. Jeez. And like, it was like 28 hours there, and then because cops can't navigate, it was 32 hours back. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we got lost, believe it or not. And um, 
Yeah, the, the AAR on, on Light Fighter was on the third page, and we were still like six hours away from, uh, <laughs> from getting home, man. <laughs> Dude, that was a long ass drive, but that's it was awesome, fun. man. Yeah, uh, that's a good time. So, that's, you, you know, can, I know you can still find that AAR on uh, Light Fighter. You know, it, and you can see us posting. Like, yeah, we're we're still like. 500 miles from the house. Dude, occasionally I get bored and get on Light Fighter and dig through the archives. The just ARs to, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, just Light awesome. Fighter. It used to be a great place. It's OG, Whenever man. Pat was helping yeah, run the yeah, show. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was a great place. Those ARs were epic, man. Yep. I used to really enjoy the roll your own forms, and then they changed the rules and made it suck. <laughs> so, yeah. So, there's some great, great threads in there, too, man. Mm-hmm. Classic threads. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I put out some good information. On the roll your own forums. Um, what was your username on there? I think it was uh, I think it was holy freaking crap. <laughs> <laughs> I believe so. Yeah. It's been so many years ago since I've logged in. I think yeah. two thousand nine. Oh, no, ten. Ain't that far along. Yeah. Because yeah. prior, the evolution of like the internet forums is pretty awesome. Just because I was kind of tied in with some dudes that were early users, so I didn't post anything, but I was like lurked. Because it started out with what uh, cop cop talk, yeah, and then it went to what was the one after that? Ten ten eight, ten eight forums, and then ten, ten eight, eight forums, and yeah. it got real big, and then it was Light Fighter, and then yeah. everything else has started kind of going out fragmented. crazy. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, but it was cool, get, man. I still get their emails. Light yeah. Fighter, yeah, Light Fighter. no, they're still, still alive and yeah, they're still yeah. moving. Yeah, yeah. they're, they're still, still alive and kicking. And their swap, high-end swap meet is still. Uh, that's that's still probably a, that's probably a good segue, man, to talk about like what what's going to happen when we all get kicked off social media. Like we're just going to have to go back to like the real internet, like back in the day where it was all forums <laughs> and all that kind of shit. Yeah, but they, of, they're even beginning to go after those. And we saw that well, a couple. Yeah, but they, they got back up in like they, a matter they of did. hours, right? They so, did, but yeah. I mean, but it's and that's yeah. why we thank everybody watching right now yeah. on our website. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, yeah, I don't, I know that it's going to get tougher probably. Um, it, it seems like they're going to put the chokehold on most social media content. Um, we are night vision company, so we fly under the radar primarily and, and we're, you know, we've not been picked on yet. Knock on wood. But, um, you know, I also think though too, they're, they're going to see that social media without conflict, it just becomes an echo, echo chamber. And and if Twitter, well, it also just becomes boring. Well, it becomes boring, you know, and 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 so if if only if it just becomes an echo chamber of the same thing, then it's going to become irrelevant. I mean, so I, so they they got to keep the conflict going because that's what that's what keeps people coming back to Twitter or or I whatever mean, else. In, in maybe a, a more serious vein, you know, I think one of my one of my concerns with that is that that ultimately you're you're. You're radicalizing more people by doing that. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You, you, you. People that are, are, are that that think that that they, you know, people might be out to get them, and then you're just proving them right. You're, you're, you, you know, so you're you're continuing that escalation by by doing that to a degree. But I think yeah. people get bored too. People like you go on there bored. and you you just hear the same thing all the time, the same complaints or the same. Whatever people are going to be like, well, it's just not worth my time. But if I can get on there and get into it, you know, an internet tough guy fight, then it's good to go. Can you guys? <laughs> can you? Uh, where, where's you that guys microphone? This up, guys? Say yes in the chat if you can hear uh, Chris pissing in the bathroom right now. <laughs> He's still going. It sounds like Chris is pissing on a rock in there. <laughs> no prostate problems there. <laughs> He can drive like halfway across the country before he has to go to the bathroom. He pisses on live stream. Yeah, he can go. He can go. I used to. I I used to know this guy that could piss over a car. (laughs) The stream can go (laughs) over the car. We're all saying yes. (laughs) It's like the naked gun, you know, when he's got the microphone and he's like (laughs) he's pissing in the. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I knew a guy that could piss a question, over man. a car. Let's take a question. Here. Uh, there's really no good questions no in the good chat No good questions anymore. right now? It, it, it's all just fucking green. It's yeah. all green. <laughs> Feel better, man? Somebody yeah. said that Size Love is a porno name, which oh. that's true. Yeah, man. So, But no, nothing is good. You know what pain. sucks is that like, I thought when I like joined the military, I'd get some kind of cool nickname. you know? And like most dudes do. They, <laughs> like, they have. They're like, hey, you're fucking whatever. But like, because my last name's all fucked up, I was still like, uh... Size love. 
<laughs> like, God damn it. Yeah. yeah, serious last name, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh damn. Shit. Somebody just said they could hear you pissing and you put the stream in live stream. Okay, cool. All right, well, <laughs> I only got one kidney, so I got to fucking piss a lot. <laughs> 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 you're working that sucker hard, that thing's man. working overtime. <laughs> I told everybody it sounded like you were pissing on a rock in there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mostly the PBR. Yeah. That shit flushes you out, man. It's good for you. Later <laughs> your day, it'll keep the doctor Plants. away. Yeah. 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 Of course, you guys, any of you guys ever have kidney stones? I, I've never had one. Yeah. A lot I've of them? Kidney stones. suck. Yeah. Yeah, I've never yeah, had Yeah, I've had a lot of kidney stones, yeah. too. What was What's the, the worst place you've ever gotten a kidney stone, though? In the kidney? No shit. So, I know she's not watching, so it's not a big deal. Uh, years ago, for my wedding anniversary, we rented a Airbnb, like, in the hinterlands of central Mexico. Nothing is out there. It's like, it was a nice place. So, we get out there, and, like, fucking, I get a kidney stone. So, the good thing is that we were in Mexico, so it's like, wife go to the fucking pharmacy right now and get the strongest shit they have because there's get, no get, get that cocaine yeah, yeah there's like there's no exfil plan like we're not there's no way that i can get help out here so like now it becomes just pain mitigation that's it and uh she did so i spent the next like hours and hours and hours just the highest high fuck high. and in yeah. pain and it was like that we're just gonna camp out here till this is over because there's no way i'm driving back to mexico city right now <laughs> you know but yeah, it, it the next day had a urinalysis. Yeah, and uh, like it was that classic you heard it like when it when it hit the porcelain it was like oh, oh yeah, that's, yeah. It. that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but the build up is the worst. Yeah. Like right before. <laughs> like uh, my worst well I've gotten two really bad bad uh, kidney stones at like pretty shitty times. Um, one was in the middle of a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, so yeah that's kind of nothing sucked. fucking yeah. open and I was on duty at the time. Uh, I passed that one though, um, relatively quickly, thank goodness. But then the second one was um, on a uh, four-hour flight from Ooh. East Coast to West Coast. Ooh. On takeoff, that bitch just cranked up, <laughs> and I was like, "God damn, it. damn!" And I'm in the middle seat. And, and I'm sweating fucking profusely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I tell the guy on the aisle, I'm like, hey, man. Hey, man. Yeah. If I'm bothering you, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I have a kidney stone right now. And if I'm, and if I'm getting up Fidgety. and going to the bathroom too yeah. much, I'm sorry, man. Like thinking he would want to switch seats, right? No. He's no. like, man, I get into my yeah, aisle seat for that. that nice dude. try, buddy. No. And he had, Is he that was like, sex for you? Yeah. And he had like his headphones plugged into the fucking screen. Oh, yeah. So the, ah, every like, time he had to unplug. You had to breach it. Yeah. Yep. Fuck. And so at the point of like where it just got so bad, basically whenever it was rolling out of my kidney down, you know, getting ready to go, you know, in its path of destruction there. <laughs> Um, it clogged. Essentially, it was over the, the hole as it exits my kidney. So I'm pounding water. I got a beer. I go back and I ask the uh, the two the stewardess uh, ladies. I said, "Hey, do you have a couple extra bottles? Do you mind if I camp out in one of these bathrooms because yeah, I have I'm, a kidney stone?" I'm hurting. And this one lady's like, "You have no business getting on a plane with a kidney stone. What are you thinking?" And I'm like, yes, today I woke up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, man, I feel fucking terrible. I'm going to get on an East Coast to West Coast flight and just deal with it. And the other the other lady was nice, so she was like, no, no, have you ever had one? They're terrible. She's like, here's some bottles of water. Yeah, just fine. Just hang out in the bathroom. We'll make sure, you know, you're, you're okay. We'll check on you every now and then. I eventually passed it, but holy hell, what a what a inopportune time to have one. Yeah. Drink a little bit of cranberry juice they, every month, they, man. They told me. Dude, I've tried it all, man. That's why. Forever. That's why I do Topo Chico, like just mm-hmm. almost, you know, a little bit of sweet tea here and there. I stay away from sodas. I stay away from all those sugary fucking drinks if I can. It's Topo Chico or uh, bubbly or like a Lacroix or something like that. Just regular yeah. water. Yeah, they did. I wouldn't wish that shit on anybody. Yeah, dude. Kidney stones are bad, man. Yeah. They're so bad. Oh, I caught, like, the last one, I caught it. And mm-hmm. I, the only thing I had to measure it, so, like, to a size comparison, yeah. was a lightning port charger for my iPhone. <laughs> and, like, you know how they have the little metal slits? Yeah, yeah. Little it contact was from points. the side of one all the way to the third metal slit. <laughs> wow. So that's Which not is like a this big. Big. All right, okay. all right, all right. Yeah, something so that's not <laughs> serious. <laughs> 
<laughs> Fucking yeah. We're grossing people out. <laughs> guns and shit. Nods, gear, helmets. Yeah. Grr. Um, who was your role model growing up? Dad. My dad. And he did, he did 18 months Vietnam at Corman. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Wow. You know, stayed in the Navy and has the oldest five kids, man. You know, we, we always, we never wanted for anything. He put good values. I mean, I fill those, fill those shoes every day, man. Yeah. Try to. Cool. It's pretty epic, dude. Yeah. You? Um, I don't know, man. It's hard to say. I don't have very many memories of being a kid. A lot of those are <laughs> shitty memories. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so, what, you were born like 21 or something? Yeah. Uh, and I don't then know, man. I would just probably was. say. Yeah, I don't know. I'd probably say, I don't know, like fucking. I watched all kinds of like the kung fu movies back in the day. So, like, <laughs> maybe fucking Bruce Lee or some shit like that, maybe. Fair I don't enough. Know. Yeah. I can't like think of a good positive role model I had anyhow, so it gotcha. was the television. There you have it. it. My fucking role model was the TV. That's who I looked to. I mean, I... Also Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Rocky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the non-Asian. Drago. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I... I more so than just a, the than just a single role model, I, I think uh, Heinlein's Starship Troopers informed a lot of my thoughts about like duty and service, and I think that's probably. I mean, because I, I feel like I'm like you. I don't really necessarily feel that I had a specific someone to look up to, mm-hmm. uh, or that I that I did look up to growing up. But but you know, in terms of where you get your ideas about you know. Uh, duty and what it means to be, you know, a man in the world. I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think Starship Troopers probably for fulfills some of that. Mm-hmm. Damn. Uh, I think debt definitely for me. You know, when I was real young, I got the chance to work at a at a training facility that actually had like legit fucking dudes there. And I got to interact with them at a super young age. You know, I was 17 years old. I and have that like, speech saved. I know. Yeah, it's like it's not it's not like a secret, but it's like fucking. You know, I got to I got to hang out and just listen to the conversations between like Louis Arbuck and Pat Rogers and Bill and Chris DeWiggins and like these dudes that like that changed my life, man. Because you know, sitting over there eating my sandwich and these dudes are talking about some real shit and I'm like these dudes are not fucking around like this is for real you, you wanna so, you wanna hear a great anyway, speech that th- that crew out there when I worked at Gunsight as a teenager like holy fuck that that, that was a pivotal moment in my life oh that's right you grew up out you, there you yeah, wanna yeah. you wanna hear a great speech guys go to YouTube <laughs> look up Friends of Pat 2017 and you're gonna hear this guy talk for about what four and a half minutes yeah and it's like awesome that. speech mm-hmm. man right off I mean, but that's it's, so. If you like Chris and you've been in the chat all day professing your love for Chris, yeah, that's weird. Check man. it out, man. It's <laughs> Go check totally that video. Friends of Pat, twenty seventeen. I'm a real asshole, so and, you know. uh, <laughs> it's freaking awesome. <laughs> but yes, yeah, yeah. definitely like probably Pat Rogers, Louis Arbuck, Chris Twiggins, those dudes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I think, I think, you know, you you, you find, you know, you have initial role models and and they kind of stay with you forever. But mm-hmm. then you know you pick like. You know, Pat was a huge role model for me. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, you know, you find guys in the military that role models or, I mean, you know, it's 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 not a one-and-done kind of thing. It can be exactly. fictional characters out of a out of book or, yeah. or you know, you, you watch, you know, John Wayne movies when you're a kid or, you know, you watch Bridge Too Far or whatever and you're like, man, those, those dudes are were pretty cool. They're fucking in it to win it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. So this is a pretty good one. When you... Fuck one, marry one, kill one. Chris, Augie, Molly. Go. I fuck, I mean, I fuck Chris asked? like four times yeah. a week, so that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not touching that one. <laughs> <laughs> not touching that one. <laughs> Thoughts on the Space Force? That's a pretty good question. I dig it. It's, it's big it's, time. Yeah, it's it's cool. I mean, 
Because whatever it is today, in a hundred years, what what could yeah. it be? Because like I'm sure people talk shit about the Air Force when they're like, it's fucking Army Air Corps. You know, like this is Air Force bullshit. But like, look at it today. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I, I would assume the Space Force I mean, potentially sure still talk shit about the Air Force. Yeah, yeah, no, I, <laughs> yeah I get it, but no, no yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, like, sky's the limit. Space, I mean, space is the limit. I mean, and in, in, in like, in like, even like they say in um, uh, Armageddon, man, we're not even like in outer space, <laughs> you know. And we aren't even as a, as a species, man. We're we're like, hey, we're we're like, you know, two hundred miles from Earth, man. You know, great job. And, and and it's like watching like the dudes leave Europe, and they're like in a boat and they're like make it 20 miles away and they come back and they're like great job you know and, and they go 200 miles away and they never come back and it's like well all right but then another person goes and there's and, that and, and, and i mean but like yeah space force is cool um you know allegedly it's you know off limits you know for for warfare but we're beginning to learn that yeah that's all there's that, that that's yeah there's, that, that brief's good um yeah. you know but um yeah man space force is cool guardians i mean everybody makes you know, and, and, and people make fun of it. I mean, wow, that's a little bit of like, oh, man, I wish I, you know. Yeah, and I don't blame them. Hey, it's man, door sweet. gunners on space shuttles, right man, now. they're yeah. coming. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I think now, Colonial Marines. My original goal, well, not original, one of my goals in the military was to not get out or retire until we had, like, functional mech suits. That, you know, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make it that far. Yeah, yeah. But hopefully the fuck Space, space Force, Force dudes will have, them, will have like, yeah, mech yeah. suits. My uh, my 28 year old baby sister was uh, actually recruited for the uh, Space Force. Um, she was in the process of enlisting in the Air Force, and they were uh, taking a long time to give her a ship out date. And her recruiter got a call from someone at the Space Force command, and they said, "Hey, ask her is she interested in joining Space Force? She's a civilian. Hey, ask her is she interested in joining Space Force?" She says, "Yeah." Um, they sent her some paperwork and they were like, all right, February 9th, you ship out. She is part of the second class of civilians to be recruited for the Space Force. Well, I mean, nice. and, and maneuver guys here will, so will the, appreciate it. High ground wins fights, man. Well, and, and I think... And, and, and I think part of the reason, high ground. I mean, I think part of the reason that that question was even asked has to do with kind of, you know, what we've been joking about. You know, you... you, you you say Space Force and you're conjuring these these images of mech suits, Colonial Marines, Space Shuttle, door gunners, but, like, space is fucking complicated. It's hard. And, and y you know, managing all of that that's up there and, and, and yeah, I mean, I think that there's definitely a, a, per a need and a purpose for, 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 or for a branch, for a proponency that has responsibility over that, like... Like people joke about it, like oh, space force, you know, and and but but it's it's complicated technical work, you know, it might not be trigger pulling in the way that that, not, that not we think yet. about it. it will be. <laughs> but but you know, it, it's definitely something that's important and definitely something that that deserves its own proponency. Yeah, concur. It, it's cool. It will eventually be mech suits and space warfare <laughs> yeah. once we figure out how that all works yeah. but, uh, fucking Todd from that movie Soldier what was, what yeah. was the yeah. Kurt, it's Kurt Russell right Kurt it's Russell fucking yeah. rank tattooed on yeah. his face and yeah, shit yeah, yeah fuck yeah. yeah what a cool movie though <laughs> yeah. 80s once again late 80s early yeah. 90s great yeah movie. it was early 90s fuck yeah. yeah but yeah man I mean satellites are fucking complicated dude they are man uh What's the most amount of demo you guys have blown at one time? I think we talked. About we talked that a little bit time. about that earlier sure. this week. Shot some big shots, yeah, yeah. man. So I spent I spent two years as the seventy fifth Ranger Regiment Master Breacher. So I was doing all the breaching courses, and uh, you know I, d I did some cleanup shots out there that ex well exceeded I don't know six hundred seven hundred pounds easy. Um, but those actually don't make the biggest booms. The biggest booms is when you blow other stuff up not mm -hmm. just raw raw demo you know what right. I mean? yeah. so uh i was working because we couldn't do what we needed to do on uh, military installations because of fucking safety shit oh yeah i had to contract out a training facility that's civilian so we can do whatever the fuck we want and the civilian site had a bunch of fucking like trailers that they seized like meth head trailers and shit and that that was our breach houses and we just we had we'd we cracked them so many times that they were just dangerous. Like I had a, a yeah. ranger like put his leg through the floor and like could have could have caught his taint on a nail or something. So I was like, I'm, 
I'm done. So my idea to force this place to build us like a new facility in accordance with the contract was like, we're going to fucking blow up every one of these places tonight. And it was like three in the morning it was after, after the POI was done. <laughs> it's like, Hey, we got, we got like nine extra crates of C4 and just a fuckload of, of debt cord and all this stuff. It's like, Hey, Hey guys, everybody gather around. So I got like 40 students in the class, like group A, group B, group C, group D, whatever, rig up everything, all, every one of these things and like make it good. Took hours to do it. Fucking, uh, supervise everything inspect everything make sure it was all going to go and we we backed off a long way away and well bam and just send it all up big time yeah yeah it was beautiful man it's probably the biggest shot ever that actually like this miles away we're like what the fuck yeah yeah oh yeah no we called fort benning because the airfield you know it's like hey you guys are about to hear some big shit don't worry about it okay it's all good it's yeah. cool. We got this. Yeah. They were probably thinking, yeah, right. Yeah. But it worked. Shit. The, the facility was like, okay. Thanks I guess, for getting rid I guess, of those for us. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Thanks for getting rid of those for us. Guess we're going to have to build some new shit for y'all. It's like an MS, <laughs> well, MBC, then. MBC3 support, you know, yeah. report. It's like left azimuth, right azimuth, <laughs> you know, high diverse. No, we, uh, during the invasion, we, um, I did targeting to drop six Moabs. Yeah. Which would have been cool, but they gave up before we could uh, drop them. So I was a little bummed. Shot them anyway. But yeah, <laughs> yeah you give up, but we're going to drop them anyway. Um, no, probably the coolest thing was uh, uh, doing some carpet bombing and B-52s up during the invasion. So uh, yeah, like 27 Mark 117s. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty pretty impressive. Good. That's cool. Yeah. Nothing big, just standard. Standard preaching stuff, stuff. not yeah. demolition stuff. Yeah. Not demo shit, mm. no, not at all. No way, no way, no how. <laughs> that literally fucking yeah. put you in jail for well, that back, shit. Back in the early days of like Iraq, before we had ASM munitions, when we were like, hey, we need to bring this fucking building down, we just crack a fucking K bottle of oxycetylene and like, oh, yeah. and freaking board, the, you know, do what you can to kind of seal the place up and just. Wham, yeah. and the whole, the whole fucking place goes down. You, you get, <laughs> it's like it's like like I'm surprised boom. in America that they, they do a big thing with like car bombs and all shit. It's like bro, it's just oxysettling, man. <laughs> like <laughs> holy fuck. <laughs> but you all. I mean, y- you know, when w- w- when I was a cadet, they let me uh, pull the cord on a one nine five. But I think on on the regular, as part of my job, is probably the uh, the the uh, 120 main gun that, that I mean, it's a pretty big boom, I would say. Yeah. Okay. 120 it'll, main gun on it'll kill Abrams. You. Abrams. It'll you know, kill like, you. years ago, dude, I did a five-day, like, carbine class for some third ID cats at Benning when I was an instructor, and we had a cycle yeah. break, and I was like, yeah, sure. And they were great dudes, and they were like, yeah, man, you got to come over. We'll put you in the driver's seat of an Abrams and, like, let you drive around the track, and I was like, yeah, cool, and I never took them up on it, man. I regret it. So I was like, tanks, I would, tanks I would like cool. to have driven a freaking Abrams. They're, they're scary. Yeah. Uh, tanks yeah. are fun when they work. <laughs> You spend you, you spend uh, more time at the fucking at the fucking motor pool and ma- doing maintenance, but but when they work, they're badass. Yeah. They're... Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's so so standing up in that TC hatch while while the main gun goes off and you just see all the dust coming off. I mean, it's pretty. That's pretty fucking badass. You have yeah. your little Patton moment. Like, <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're loud. <laughs> like I was, I was chewing ass on one of my lieutenants in Korea next to an Abrams and it, it was screening so that's like zeroing yeah. the main gun and it went off mm-hmm. and man I, I couldn't hear for like two fucking hours <laughs> no, that's why so, so that's what those things are for <laughs> I mean that's why I, I fucking I uh, like, like I always have to talk on my phone on speakerphone because I cannot hear like I can hear the army says that I still have mm-hmm. perfect hearing I'm still like a one on Bull- hearing bullshit but yeah. everything yeah. is so muddled together I'm the same way you need to get wear uh, in earbuds that's the only yeah. way I can hear so well, well so I just put everything on speaker yeah. because if I have it up against my ear I, I can't yeah. hear you can't shit. even hear it with understand. headphones with headphones, I it's a little bit better, no, but it's easier to just it's easier for me to just have it on speakerphone. So I have to like yeah. tell people when I'm answering the phone, "Hey, by the way, I'm in a room full of people, and you're on speakerphone," <laughs> and they're like, "Fuck, <laughs> shit." <laughs> But I mean, yeah. So, so like I said, the the army says that I can hear all the tones that I'm supposed to. I just can't tell the difference between them and and discern speech. Well, yep. Hey guys, just so you know, we, we call this a virtual circle bar. 
let's talk about you know this is what happens at the circle bar after yeah. a shot shows yeah. over yep. uh, for the day everybody kind of goes to circle bar which is Right Good in the middle of uh, the, shit. the Venetian, the Venetian and the only thing missing here is like a bunch of old ladies playing uh, slots. slots behind us. And, yeah. and, uh, really and, expensive drinks. And uh, lots of cigarette yeah. smoke. And, and our buddies that we know. miss. Uh, yeah, that we I don't mean, get to but see. It's, it's pretty fun to, to hang around and um, this, is, yeah, what this we, is what we do, yeah. you know, just kind of be us yeah. for a couple hours. and then. Yeah. Uh, so like SHOT Show, you're on your feet uh, all day. And it gets pretty tiring, as you can imagine. I, I, I know that there's people out there that have jobs in which they're <laughs> on their feet every day, so I'm not trying to minimize that. But uh, it's, it's, very, it's very loud. You have to speak constantly uh, to folks, as you should. There's like uh, camera appearances and you know people interviewing, stuff like that, showing off new products. But at the end of the day, kind of one of the rituals that most folks do is to decompress is we all go and hang around the, the circle bar and we just talk about different shit or hang out or see our friends. And we want to replicate that because a lot of folks are like, hey, I don't know what SHOT Show is like. Well, to me, the most fun thing at SHOT Show is getting to see everyone every yep. year and also hanging around uh, the circle bar, talking about different things, networking. And that's basically just what we're doing now. Yep. So it emulates it the best, and it kind of shows yeah, you that we're ready. It's a little bit people. of the, yeah, it's a little bit of Yeah, I mean, experience. you know, it, obviously there are people that were, you know, people had a lot of different feelings about SHOT Show being canceled this year, but but I, so I feel glad. like the, the overwhelming response that I heard from, from everyone I knew in the industry is everybody was glad that they didn't have to do the booth for once, but everybody was missing yeah. exactly it's, it's this. It's the one time a year when you can see all yeah, your you friends see, yep. in, in a period of time. So yeah, and it, like it's so shit. Shit always cooks up because of shot. Like, right. Yeah. Like because of the circle bar. Like yeah. ev events occur that would otherwise not have occurred. Yeah. And that that right. may be something that like takes a dive in 2021 because we didn't get that circle bar experience for dudes to be like, bro, let's do a fucking some crazy shit. Yeah. yeah. Class. Or here's a new or, idea. Yeah, yeah. You know, like products, whatever. A new you know product what I mean? or. Um, or. So, you know. but you know, trying to make it happen. Cool. So somebody asked, "What's the coolest part of V Shot versus regular Shot Show?" Um, the coolest part of V Shot is that um, while there is a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we had to do to prep for this, and it is a lot of work, um, it's nowhere near. Uh, long days like SHOT Show is. SHOT Show typically, especially if you're representing a company and, and doing the booth life thing, um, you're waking up uh, usually at about 6 a.m. ish, trying to grab food on the way down to prep the booth and get it rolling. The event starts up, you run that till 5 p.m. The booth uh, breakdown and then trying to migrate uh, back to your room really quickly to either throw on something different or get out of the clothes that you've been in all day. Then you have meetings, dinner meetings and all that stuff to attend. And by the time it rolls around, it's uh, it's midnight or 1 a.m. And, hey, I'm going to swing by the circle bar, see everybody because now I'm yeah. done with my daily stuff. Just have stuff. one drink. <laughs> Just have yeah. one drink, which turns into seeing everyone. All fucking night. Yeah. All fucking night. And, um, and then, essentially, I tell people all the time, the true business is done for industry folks after hours so circle bar yep. networking things like that mm. um, of course we do a lot of business with dealer accounts and folks that are purchasers as well i don't mean that in that way but between company to company uh the business is done after hours uh that's the biggest difference here it's much more relaxed we get to control the script and what we want to talk about which we want to just be down to earth as possible um shot show you have to put on your game face and talk to people all day and say the same things constantly. I mean, I think, you know, and I think every business is like that too, but, but, you know, this industry in particular, I mean, it comes down to relationships and, and, and the circle bar is, is very much a place for that, very much a place to cultivate that. Um, right. And, and, and that's why, and, and that's why when we said that we were going to do a virtual, virtual, uh, uh, show, um, you know, in lieu of SHOT Show, and actually it wasn't in lieu of SHOT Show when we first came up with it, um, but, uh, you know, when we decided to do this, you know, Virtual Circle Bar was part of it from the beginning. Yeah. I think I think the cool thing about V-Shot is 
you know, SHOT Show is, ends up being guys like us talking to guys like us. Yeah. In, in some form or fashion. And, and so, you know, people who can't go to SHOT end up, you know, going to Soldier Systems Daily or reading about it on, on the ARFCOM threads or watching YouTube videos from, you know, uh, people that are going to the show. And, and in here, we have an opportunity to interact with our customers yeah. as yeah. opposed to, you know, so the show's, you know, is, and it's cool because, like, today answering the phones and stuff, talking to customers, you know, I'm like, hey, are you, you know, are you, are, are you, are you watching V-Shot or have you seen any of it? And, and, you know, just getting some feedback. But, you know, to me, I think the cool thing is, is I feel like this event has been more focused on our, customer base as opposed to our industry base mm -hmm. yeah. and 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 that's really where um you know where the rubber hits the road and that's i think nra is a better show than shot because normal yeah. people can go to nra and and that's our audience at nra yep. and and this show i think like virtual shot is allowing us to you know connect i mean the, the only bad thing about virtual shot is like you guys can't come here and, and see the, the, the stuff and talk to us like like you can and we have black tablecloths yeah, we're yeah. sorry yeah yeah but uh but no i think i think it's and i think this is the way it's gonna go i don't i don't think there'll be a shot show i think things are gonna collaborate against shot for a number of reasons and um i think it's gonna be virtual from is, now on is nra still in the books no nra's canceled the show, the show okay. already I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but i mean you know cost this is a lot cheaper the pandemic, you know, yeah. take whatever, you know, health concerns you got, political environment. Um, I mean, technology is supporting us doing this. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many reasons why should we go back to SHOT, you yeah. know? Plus it yeah. gives the average person that would never ever get to attend SHOT Show a little bit of a feel of what um, at least the media side of SHOT Show is like for us. Yeah. We do the same shit. We stand in front of the cameras, we talk about what's new that year. And then we explain how it works and what our MSRP or whatever is going to be. And then we move on to the next thing. Yeah, I mean, basically basically every single bit of content that, that we collected for, for V-Shot and, and that we've shown to you and we've still got, you know, one more night coming up tomorrow. I mean, it's, it's all essentially based on the same stump speeches, the same <laughs> information that we would have been giving uh, during SHOT Show had we been there on the floor. Um, you know, there's, there's differences in format. So, so ultimately we were able to pre-record a good bit of it. Um, even those things that we, we, we did live, uh, you know, we, we only said it once, but we were also able to reach, you know, three, 400 of you at a time. Can't fit that, in, fit that in front of our booth, uh, <laughs> and have people understand what we're trying to say. Um, and it's all going to be archived. So, so, you know, even if, you, you know, we're talking now on Thursday, if on Monday you want, you you might be watching this on Monday, you might be watching this two weeks from now and, and you still have all that information. But if you really look at the structure of, uh, of what we had and what we did and what we talked about, I mean, it's the same stuff that we talk about at SHOT Show up to and including, you know, we did the live stream discussion about, the uh, you know about all of our carbines. If you've ever been to the TNBC booth uh, at Shot Show, if you've seen pictures of the TNBC booth at Shot Show, what do we have? We have a helmet wall, we have a rifle wall, and we have the display case. So I mean, it's it it, it really was kind of based and structured over. All right, what would we have done had we been there? And guess what? Augie would probably still have stepped in dog shit with the number of miles <laughs> that, that you see at, uh, at shot nowadays. That's so, true. so that is a realistic experience from shot. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to take a few more questions and then we're going to wind this down for the night. Um, let's do uh, shot show crud versus COVID. What's worse? I probably got COVID at shot. Uh, yeah, I think I did too. I mean, definitely <laughs> shot show crud. I had definitely a, shot show. Last year was worse. rough. Last yeah. year was rough. Yeah. yeah. Like I was sick for like over a week last year, and everybody was. Like, yeah. Everybody yeah, was like, like, "Man, this is hard." Last year, shot so too. you know, the, the Wu flu was just getting into into yeah. full season when, and there's a lot of Chinese at shot. <laughs> yeah. So. So yeah, 
that's my thing. That's my take on it. Shot Show Crit is, is way worse. Uh, it, it put me absolutely down for the count. Um, it was bad. Shot Show Crit was bad. COVID, I'm not saying it. it's not bad for some people, but COVID, and it, it was just mild. Mild. Comparatively. <laughs> it's a plus. Yeah, yep. there you go. What else? Um, Something that's going to cause an argument. Yeah, yeah. We should. We, should, we, we need to. We, we need to finish on a high tonight. note. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this low note of like yeah. crud and COVID. Right. We're not well, so, pump sunshine so, up so, each other's you know, asses. after after the first year that I went to Shot Show, I I I, I will not. Or I always wear a suit or a blazer or something very like like I don't wear this at Shot Show. Maybe at the Circle Bar I would, but I don't wear this at Shot Show. And the reason for that is because Asian don't raisin. Uh, when when you're an Asian dude, when you're a skinny Asian dude walking around Shot Show and actually trying to have conversations with people about up. like yeah. like you know, the, about their products, yeah, yeah, they they will not talk to you uh, if 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 you're dressed casually. So I've got a I if you see me at Shot Show, I'm always wearing something very formal because it's the only way. Yeah. Did you say Asian don't raise it? Yeah, I, I don't know what that means. What's that mean? Yeah. Y'all have never heard that expression? No. 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 Asian don't raisin? Well, I'm not racist. For <laughs> so, no, I've never heard And I'm not Asian. Don't wrinkle. So. Yeah. Don't, don't oh. light, like, visibly age. Uh, okay. Yeah. I got you. All right. So, okay. so Im- implying that I'm, I- I'm youthful looking relative to, to okay. my actual age? Yeah. No, that's... Okay. Okay. I understand. Right. That. Okay. <laughs> How many PVS 31 orders since announcement? We don't talk about numbers because it's just not something to brag about, but quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, quite a bit. That's just I mean, what that don't, that shouldn't matter unless you're just worried that they won't be there. And if you're worried that they won't be there, well, it's something we're going to regularly stock. So. Yeah, it's something that we're going to regularly stock. Well, so. sell, not stock. Well, right. Also, maybe we'll try. Eventually, we'll try to stock them, but uh, yeah. Uh, I hear there are a lot of gray market units getting thrown up for sale cheap, though. Yeah. Now. What once was sixteen thousand dollars for a used who knows condition, thirty one have now just plummeted. So, jump on that if you want to use one. Night vision futures, man, it's a cruel mistress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's a new administration, and like night vision <laughs> futures just took a dive. <laughs> um. Let's do let's do a fun one to to end it. Uh, yep. What's everybody's dream vehicle? Dream vehicle. <sighs> hmm. So I, I I'll answer. I mean I've I've got a Tacoma now, but but uh, when I was in L and O, they 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 threw me behind uh, the wheel of a JNTV. So so an up armored Hilux, and I fucking ah, love that thing. Yeah. Um, Those are nice. So, so, so if I, yeah, my dream vehicle would be a fucking JNTV. Man, and those Hiluxes, I, I'm gonna say Hilux, man. Like they'll hit a fucking IED, <laughs> and like you just like push it back over, <laughs> and it's like, it'll, and that diesel engine will just crank up, and it'll keep on going. I mean, yeah, Hilux. Like if if we could import Hiluxes, and I think that's the only reason why we don't is because if if Hiluxes came in this country, like Ford, Chevy, Dodge, DOA. I mean, like, I mean, it would, everybody would be driving Hilux. That, that and all the vets would be, like, fucking road warrior. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, man. <laughs> Hilux all day, all day long. It'd be awesome. I have a Tacoma, and I'd get rid of my Tacoma in a heartbeat for a, for a four-door Hilux. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Hilux. I don't know. I, I, I'm more of the mind of, like, I'd kind of like a funny car to fuck with people. <laughs> and uh, so I, I would Mini like... Cooper? No, I would like like an '81 Monte Carlo that's black <laughs> yes. with like the six, top? sixteen switches in it and like <laughs> some silver Daytons and shit. They fifteens, but they clean them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just to fuck around. Like I always wanted to roll through like a military gate, like all low, and then like roll down the window and like pop it up. Pop it like, up. Here's my cat card. You know what I mean? Like pass it back and like and then just roll. Like shit like that would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> like the way he has like the whole like yeah. body yeah. <laughs> that's good that's or good. like a, a Grand National man those things good, a good visual oh, right there yeah. 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 yeah yeah how about you Eric yeah you know cars are just something I don't care about so uh, I don't know like maybe an up 
Maybe a new Forerunner or something. I don't know. I drive a Forerunner now. Maybe just a newer one. You don't want like a Lambo to match the hair? Nah. <laughs> Nah. Imagine Mazda. that glorious hair. Yeah. Mazda Miata. Yeah. 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 No, man. <laughs> yeah. Park that bitch in South Beach and get out. <laughs> That's Phil. Why don't you bring Phil here to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Cut off t-shirt, fanny pack. <laughs> and a Bren 10, man. Yeah. <laughs> Speed up with a sack hanging out. Yeah. So. Nice. So, uh. That's pretty much it. That's it for tonight. I think we're going to wrap up. What do you guys think? Yeah. yeah. One more night Just to hey go. Hey, guys, we've got one more night of uh, V-Shot coming up tomorrow. Um, We've still got a big product announcement coming tomorrow, so don't think just because it's Friday there ain't going to be nothing happening. Obviously, we've got our grand prize uh, drawing um, as well as a lot of other good, great giveaways from our sponsors. Um our first loser giveaway, which will be <laughs> this guy right here. Shoe, shoe and all these. <laughs> so make sure you sign up and register. Uh, it's your it's it's your last chance, but uh, it's it, it's a pretty big chance. TNV PBS fourteen, um, and and again, a lot of great prizes uh, from from all of our sponsors. That's tnvc.com slash vshot with two T's V S H O T T. Make sure you sign up. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have and a good also, night. Thank we'll, you guys. we'll sweeten the deal as well. We'll have Molly come out and announce the winner of the PBS yeah, 14. Yeah, Molly. <laughs> Molly, everybody's well, been asking about Molly. We'll have yeah, Molly come yeah, out. Yeah, Molly will come out. Molly and, will uh, come out. She'll, uh, she'll announce the, the giveaway winner for the PBS 14. TNBC.com, B Shot, two T's. We'll see you guys. Thank you. Gang, gang. <laughs>